So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto neglected by Konoha and becomes a dragon summoner. The movie. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Discovering the Hatchling. Inoha, the village hidden in the leaves and what most call the strongest hidden village of the elemental nations. Many great heroes had come from this village, all changing the world with their power, to most it was a paradise where people could be happy to live the lives they wanted under the protection of ninja and the great Yandame Hokage, but among every paradise lies hidden secrets. In the late hours of twilight with the residents of Konoha still safe and sound in their bed, a noise was heard, in the back alley between houses a small figure could be seen curled up inside a box. The figure was a boy no older than six years old with a very cute face, his golden blonde hair sprayed out in messy unkempt spikes that looked like he had just rolled out of bed, and his eyes were a deep sapphire blue so much they looked like the stones themselves. On each of his cheek were three birthmarks that seemed to give the boy whiskers. This boy's name was Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, the young son of the current Hokage Minato Namikaze. Many would wonder since he was the son of the Hokage what he was doing in a box leaping in an alleyway. Naruto played on his side, his eyes filled with tears as he held a small red plush dragon close to his chest and tried to stop himself from outright crying at his situation, he wanted to still be strong, but he found he was having a hard time as he thought over how he ended up in a situation like this. Naruto was born six years previously on a cool night of October 10, he and his two twin sisters Naruko and Nido had all been born about the same time, and for the new family of five, it was supposed to be the happiest day of their lives. However, fate played a cruel hand as on that very night the most powerful of the tailed beast, the nine-tailed fox, attacked the Hidden Leaf Village. Minato as well as the rest of the shinobi force rushed to meet it in a fierce battle lasting for hours, seeing no other option Minato prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice and seal the beast away. Flashback, it's too strong. A ninja yelled as the fox swiped one of its tails across the forest, uprooting trees by sheer force. Damn a kid, we need to bring that thing down now. Jiraiya the Toad Sage said as he and Minato stood on top of the boss summon of the Toad's Gamabunta. I know, I just wish there was another way. Minato said as he looked down at the sleeping form of his two newborn daughters, he knew after tonight he would never get to see them and his son Naruto grow up and be heroes. There is Minato, give them to me. A voice said behind him making him turn, standing behind him in his black ninja gear, was the third Hokage Hiruzen Saratobi, with a grim but determined look. Sensei, what are you doing here? Jiraiya was shocked to see his teacher. Doing my final duty to the village, Minato you have a family you think of and a village to lead. I'm old and have done so much for the village that it seems only fitting I go out in glory. Saratobi said as he took the young children out of Minato's arms. Minato wanted to protest against it, saying he still had so much to offer the village, but he stopped when he saw the look in the old man's eyes. A look of determination and almost happiness as his chance to do one final job for his village which caused Minato to nod. Well keep the best contained. He told the old Hokage, who nodded and flashed off. Arriving at the spot where the beast was being held down by seals thanks to Minato, Saratobi set the two small girls on stone pedestals he created with and began to flash through a series of hand signs, while Jiria, Minato, and Gamabunta kept the beast still. Sealing Jutsu. Reaper Death Seal. The old Hokage yelled as he pressed his hands to the ground, a large seal formed under the fox, and began to drain it of its energy, splitting it in half, with each going to one of the two girls who began to cry from being woken up. The nine tails thrashed and desperately tried to free itself, but it was all for naught as soon the energy was too much, and it disappeared with a final roar and a flash of crimson, and two identical seals appeared on the girls. With his final act done Saratobi smiled and willingly let his soul fall into the waiting mouth of the Shinigami before it disappeared, leaving only silence in its wake. Minato walked over and kneeled down to the old Hokage and paid his respects before picking up his girls. I promise Saratobi I'll honor your sacrifice. He said before flashing back to the hospital. Flash back over, after that day the village rebuilt itself and life returned to normal, the trio of Kamikaze children grew and the family became whole. But, slow things began to change for the family of five. The girls regarded as heroes for having the fox sealed inside them, were praised and showered with admiration and love, while Naruto remained in the backdrop always happy for his sisters, but soon began to feel left out. Slowly the family began to forget Naruto was even around, it started out small, like not calling him right away for dinner, or simply not noticing he was in the room, but gradually it became more and more, until they didn't even remember he was in the house or with them, if they went out on family outings. 
the final straw was on this night when the girl celebrated their sixth birthday being showered with love and presents from their friends and other members of the various clans Naruto didn't even bother coming downstairs as no one even knew he was there. He no longer could take it and that night with nothing more than the clothes on his back and the small dragon he had received back on his second birthday and one of the last few good memories he had he snuck out his window and disappeared into the night. As these thoughts played out in Naruto's head he never noticed a shadow moving outside the alleyway he was in, nor did he see the warm amber eyes turn into the alley and see him. Naruto was pulled out of his thoughts with a gasp when he heard a noise coming from outside his box and scooted in closing his eyes and whimpered thinking someone had come to hurt him. It's alright little one, you don't have to be afraid. A soft voice said gently as a hand was placed on his shoulder to throw away some of the fright. Slowly the boy opened his eyes and glanced out. The figure outside his box was an impressive sight. She was a female standing about a mid easily 6 one with long flowing silver hair reaching her shoulders and tied up in a ponytail, her eyes were amber and seemed to have a warm glow around them. She was wearing an interesting mix of clothes, over her chest was a black leotard with red swirls and patterns sewn into the fabric. Her lower half was covered by a battle skirt of the same design with black spandex shorts under it. Her legs had armor on them and black armored ninja sandals to keep them safe. The leotard did armored sleeves as well with metal-plated fingerless gloves on her hand, and over it all was a silver trench coat that reached down to her feet and had an icy blue fire design similar to his father's. W who are you? He asked in a small voice still showing he was scared, but that changed when he saw the warm motherly smile he gave him. I should be asking you the same question little one, not every day you find such a cute little boy out here on the streets, but since you were polite I'll introduce myself first. My name is Mirakira Tori. She said, crouching down to his level. And my name is N Naruto. He told her, making her gain a look of surprise. Kashina's boy, what's he doing out here like this? Mira thought, her and Kashina were old friends from back in the academy days. What are you doing out here so late, little one, shouldn't you be at home with your family? She asked him, however the next words out of his mouth shocked her. I don't have a family, they don't care about me and don't even notice me. He said sadly the tears returned. Hey hey, none of that now little one. She said before giving him a thoughtful smile. You know there is an easy way for that to be fixed. She said, making him look at her. How? He asked and she could hear the hope in his voice. How would you like to be a part of my family? She asked him, making his eyes go wide, for a six-year-old who had no family, how could he say no? She gave a small huff when his small body plowed into her with a tight hug, and he began to cry small happy tears, smiling as she picked him up and carried him back to her home. Once they arrived he was already asleep, so she took him to the spare bedroom and laid him down to sleep while she took care of a few things she needed to do. Summoning Jutsu. She said placing her blood-stained palm to the ground and a small poof of smoke appeared, when it vanished, it revealed amazingly a small dragon that stood on all fours and had copper-like scales with a messenger bag on his shoulder. It wasn't well known, but Mira was the unofficial fourth senate of the Leaf Village, given her title by Lady Tsunade herself for being the wielder of the dragon summon contract. You called Mrs. Mira. The dragon said in a small voice. Yes Gaia, normally I wouldn't do this, but I need you to go to Katakana and have her forge some documents for me. She said, adding a small message to her bag. Can I ask why MRS? Gaia asked. I came across a boy tonight and wished to adopt him. However, it will be tricky with who this boy is, so I need the right documents before I do. She explained. The small dragon gave a nod. It will be done at once ma'am. The small dragon said before disappearing in a puff of smoke. With everything taken care of she went to her room and undressed before turning in for the night. The next morning Minato Namaka sat in his office in the Hokage Tower, facing the most vile enemy of all cage, paperwork. He gave a sigh as he tiredly sorted through all the documents on his desk, trying hard to not fall asleep, he was still tired from his daughter's birthday party the night before, but knew he had to get this done. Something small nagged at the back of his mind like he was forgetting something, but he shrugged it off and instead focused on the work until a knock was heard on his door. Enter. He called out not looking up. The door opened and Mira walked in with a small tired expression herself, as well as two cups of coffee. Please tell me you're an angel and one of those is for me. He asked looking up and smiling when he saw her, she just chuckled and handed him one. Leonardo had known Mira for quite some time, it was ironic he was friends with her because she was his wife's other rival, along with the Ichiha matriarch Matoko. The trio of girls had been best friends back in the days of the academy, always pushing each other and teasing each other because of their rivalry. When they grew up they became fiercely protective of each other, each earning a nickname. For Kashina it was the Red Hot Habanero, for Makoto the Flame Princess of Konoha, and for Mira it was Konoha's Red Dragon Empress. Still battling the evils of paperwork. Mira asked, snapping him out of his thoughts. Yes, one day I will discover the secret to taming this. 
he said with a voice full of passion which only made her laugh. So what brings you here Mira, I seriously doubt it was just to bring me coffee. He asked her to set her drink down and pull out some paperwork. Well last night while I was out on my evening stroll I came across a small child who was hiding in a back alleyway, feeling compelled I stopped and helped the boy and almost instantly fell in love with him, since he had quite the sad story of his parents neglecting him for his sisters, so I came here today to finalize adoption papers. She said, surprising Minato as he didn't even know there was a child like that in his village. Taking the papers he looked them over and saw that everything was in order, including what needed to be known about the boy, the only thing that wasn't there was a photo. How come there isn't a picture? He asked. He wasn't registered in the archive so I was unable to find him and I couldn't take one this morning with the little cutie still fast asleep. She said smiling. Well besides that everything else is signed and sealed, just get us a photo sometime soon so we can add him to the archives. Minato said, taking a stamp and sealing it with his approval, making her smile. Will do, also I don't think I'll be enrolling him in the academy. He doesn't seem to do well around others besides me right now, so I'm thinking of taking him on one of my training trips. She explained. Much like how Jairia left the village with his traveling rights, Mira sometimes left the village to go out into the world and train, so this wasn't so much of a shock to the Hokage. How long do you plan to leave? He asked. No later than six years, just around the time he would graduate from the academy anyway and this way when I return with him, he'll be ready to be placed on a squad. She said, he nodded and smiled. All right then, just make sure to write when you get the chance. I doubt Kashina is going to take it well if you don't send her some letters or something. He said, making her laugh. We'll do a flash. She said before walking out the door and out the building. Sunlight filtered softly in between the cracks of the curtains as Naruto gave a small groan and rolled over to try and keep it out of his eyes, slowly he began to wake up and realized he wasn't in the box he had been the night before and sat up. Looking around he saw he was in a modest bedroom, painted the color of S sunset which was his favorite color. So it wasn't a dream. He thought as a glorious smell hit his nose making his mouth water, jumping out of bed he rushed down the hall following his nose when he found the kitchen. Standing by the oven was the woman who saved him last night Mira and she was cooking breakfast. Well good morning little one, go ahead and get comfy the food is almost done. She said smiling as he took a spot at the table nervously. He smiled when she came back and set down a plate filled with all kinds of breakfast foods in front of him and his mouth watered, waiting until she sat down he thanked her and dug into the food with gusto, making her laugh. Slow down little one, you'll give yourself a tummy ache. She said, making him slow down. For 10 minutes all there was was the sound of eating, and finally when it was done Naruto sighed happily. Thank you very much MRS. He said smiling. She nodded and took the dishes and began to clean them, as she did he remembered what they had talked about last night. Um MRS Mira, did you mean what you said when you said I could be a part of your family? He asked half hoping it was true. Of course I did, in fact. She said, setting down the adoption paperwork and showing him that officially he was her son, he grinned ear to ear until he noticed something that confused him. Hey, why is my name Tenzo? My name is Naruto. He asked, making her chuckle. Because you're my son now and I thought it seemed appropriate that since you are here you got a new name to match your new home. She said, being six he didn't mind so much and actually kind of liked the name. Okay mama.the now named Tenzo said smiling, and she sniffed happily and hugged him when he called her mama. Oh my sweet little boy. She said smiling, she was a mother now and it excited her. Soon she pulled away and ruffled his hair, checking the time she nodded. Now then I have something to tell you sweetie, you want to be a ninja don't you? She asked him to nod his head frantically, he wanted so badly to get strong and be a cool ninja. Well today you start that journey, you and I will be leaving the village for a couple of years, and I will be training you out in the real world about how to be a shinobi alright. She said. He was nervous at first since he didn't know if he truly wanted to leave the village or if he was ready to do something like that, however once he looked at his mama and realized she would be there to protect him and help him get strong, he smiled and hugged her. Okay mama. He said, making her hug back again. She smiled and stood before going to get dressed. Come on then let's get you cleaned up, we have something to do before we leave. She said as they went to get ready. An hour later Tenzo stood at the entrance of the gate of Konoha, checking over his things like his mother had told him to, seeing how they would be leaving, she decided to get him some proper ninja wear that did include his favorite orange color, but not something as ridiculous as a bright orange tracksuit. Tenzo was now wearing a black form-fitting shirt with orange swirls on each arm, a set of armored black pants that were similar to the Anbu pants, he had black shinobi sandals, on which Mira added a bit more armor, plating too to keep his feet protected. On either side of his pants was a kunai holder, and he had a dark blue pouch on the back of his belt full of shuriken, ninja wire, and a few odds and ends she had packed for him. 
To complete the look his mother had bought him a coat similar to her own, but it was midnight black with an orange dragon head stamped dead center of the coat. All set sweetie. Mira asked having just finished checking over her own things, her pouches and holders were a bit bigger for more weapons, and on her back, she had a large Adachi style sword strapped to her back over her coat, and an equally large scroll that was golden in color, with silver etching on it, and a dragon head stamped on the front, this was the dragon summon contract. Yeah mom, I'm all ready. He said happily bouncing over to her, she had already told him she would make him a great ninja, and now seeing her in full ninja attire, he knew he one day would be just like her. Well then let's get going. She said turning and showing her paper to the gate guard, before the two walked out of the massive gate and into the woods. Turning back one final time Tenzo looked at his whole man with determination thought. I promise I will get stronger, strong enough for you to all know my name, and so my family remembers me, just you wait. He thought with determination before turning back and caught up with his mother, as the two began their new journey into the unknown. Chapter 2. On the Road to Greatness. Began Naruto, you have to keep practicing if you want to get stronger. Mira said as she crossed her arms and looked down at the panting form of her son. Three years had passed since she had found Naruto in that back alleyway, and they had left the village in order to train Naruto so he could become stronger and a proper shinobi, and much had changed in the years that had followed. Though on paper his name was Tenzo Mira never called him that unless they were around other people, he understood why since they didn't want to leave Shinobi finding out about him and taking him back to the leaf village when he didn't want to, but when they were in private, she always referred to him as Naruto. To also be safe she had taught him a special henge jutsu that could only be performed by those of the dragon summons that allowed the user to change certain physical traits of his appearance as long as he was bonded with a dragon familiar to him. Naruto looked up at his mom and painted with a smile on his face, overall he had gotten some looks from the last three years of training. He now stood at a respectable 5'3 which was good for someone of his age, and he had gained a decent amount of muscle tone. His skin still had the tan only now it was a touch darker from all the traveling they did. His face had changed the most due to the hinge, although he only had it on when they were in public, when he did he no longer had his whisker birthmarks, and one of his eyes was now a light amber similar to his mother as a small connection to her, and his hair was half black and half blonde. Currently the mother and son were in the woods of the land of fire, having left a small town a day ago, and decided to stop and do some training, with Naruto still somewhat to you to perform past the three basic academy jutsus she had shown him, they mainly focused on his tojutsu and kinjutsu. Mira made a point to teach him her style of fighting known as the Dragon Knight style, it combined a mix of high-speed martial arts, used to strike a key spots quickly and accurately, similar to the Hyuga's gentle fist style, but with no chakra, and added heavy and devastating swordsman style, for facing any kind of opponent. Sure thing mom. Naruto said jumping back to his feet with a determined look on his face, he had started calling her mom full time two years ago. Now then remember what I showed you, you have to be quick on your feet and never let your opponent know where you're going to be coming from next. Mira said, dropping into the basic stance of the style, Naruto nodded and copied her before he rushed forward. His speed had increased leaps and bounds due to the runs and exercises his mother made him do, so he had the momentum and stamina for the style, he blurred forward striking low to her stomach, only for her to block with her fist and send a jab to his shoulder. He bent away from it and sent another strike to her stomach, trying to stagger her and knock her off her feet, the blow connected making her grunt and using what small advantage Naruto had around behind her, and slammed an elbow into her back to send her staggering forward. Mira smirked a bit as she righted herself and turned to face her son, only to see he wasn't there, confused. She looked around until she heard the sound of leaves shuddering and looked up. Naruto fell from the tree he had raced up quickly and dropped down, slamming a foot into her head and knocking her to the ground. Naruto panted for a second before grinning widely and laughed. Dot, I got you, mom, I finally got you to admit it. He said, doing a small victory dance. Mira laughed a bit as she pulled herself out of the dirt and smiled at him. Dot, yes, you did, Naruto, and I am very proud of you. She said, smiling. Dot, but remember, just because you beat me does not mean you have the style mastered. You are indeed getting better with the basic stances, meaning it will soon become time for you to move on to the intermediate, and I promise you that will be a whole lot tougher. She said in a firm voice. He nodded and smiled. I am ready mom, I made a promise to get stronger, and nothing's gonna stop me from doing it you just watch. He cheered in his usual hyperactive tone that made her laugh whenever he did. Alright mister, go get yourself cleaned up and then come back so we can have lunch. We'll continue training after that alright. She said, sure thing mom. He said before jogging off a bit deeper into the woods to a stream they had made their camp by. He stripped out of his training clothes leaving him in just his shorts before jumping into the water and settled into the stream, it wasn't a hot bath at a hotel or anything, but he and his mother rarely stayed fully in towns since they had a love for camping out in the wild. 
His mom said that it was because they were free spirits and didn't like to be in one place for so long plus that also helped them avoid any leaf shinobi in case they were looking for him. As Naruto played against a bank of the river, he couldn't help but stop and think about how much his life had changed since his mom had come into his life so many amazing things had happened with her helping him get stronger and some of the adventures the two of them had over the course of the years of training. He smiled with his eyes shut until he heard a noise, his eyes snapped open as he looked around and heard a high-pitched scream coming from close by that sounded slightly feminine. His eyes turned a bit hard as he jumped out of the water and threw the spare clothes he had brought with him on before racing towards where the scream had come from. Pushing past branches and shrubs he soon came across a clearing and saw a group of people in it, not wanting to risk it, he stopped and hid in a nearby bush. Quickly he flashed through a set of three hand signs. Dragon Persona Transformation. He whispered as he used a hat that changed his appearance to his more publicly known self and peeked out to see what was going on. In the clearing a group of large men holding weapons were surrounding a small figure with looks that disgusted him. He had seen looks like that before on some of the bandits that had tried to attack him and his mom, but what truly caught his attention was the figure in between them. In the middle of the group was a small girl no older than maybe 12 or 13. Her hair was a violet purplish color that was short but messy, kind of similar to his own, and was tied up almost like the stem of a pineapple in the back. Her eyes were a darkish brown color and were filled with fear of the men, she didn't seem to have much as far as clothing, just a brown over shirt and tan skirt. She didn't look the healthiest either, she was thin, and her body looked like she had taken a beating. The burning rage appeared inside Naruto as he saw the group. He despised people like the men who only hurt others and did it for their own sick pleasure. Taking a breath he calmed himself before closing his eyes. Daka, I need you to send a message to mom. I found a group of bandits not too far from camp who are hurting someone and plan to keep them busy until she gets here. He mentally said. Don't worry Naruto I'm on it. A small voice replied. That was Taka Naruto's dragon familiar which his mom had summoned from J-I-G-O-K-U-Y-A-M-A-1, the great home of the dragons to keep himself and allow him to use the dragon persona jutsu. But that done Naruto took a breath and stepped out of the bushes. Hey, leave her alone. He shouted at the bandits making them look at him and smirk. Well what do we got here, a little punk trying to play here. One of them sneered as the others laughed. What should we do with him? Another asked. I say we got him quickly and then take the girl back to the boss. The third said and the others laughed and nodded in agreement. Well kid, it looks like it's your unlucky day. The leader of the group sat and advanced on the kid. Naruto growled and instinctively dropped into the opening kata for the Dragon Knight style before rushing forward and slamming a fist into the advancing bandits, stomach making him cough and spit up some bile before falling back. Not giving his attackers a chance to retaliate, he rushed forward and drove his fists in a series of punches into the second largest stomach before using him as a springboard and kicked the other in the face, surprisingly hard enough to knock him cold. You little shit. One yelled trying to cut him with his sword, Naruto moved out of the way of each slash and roundhouse kicked him in the face before turning his sights to the last one still standing. The bandit looked terrified and turned to run away, only to be slashed in half by Mira with a dachi in hand. Nice work sweetie, you handled that quite well. She said. He smiled big again before remembering the girl and ran over to her. Hey are you okay? He asked, stopping in front of her. The girl didn't know what to say, one minute she had been scared for her life at what the bandits prepared to do to her, when the next thing she knew this black-haired boy had come out of nowhere and faced down the bandits, bringing them down one by one and saving her. She looked into his mismatched eyes and felt a small stir in her chest that she couldn't identify. Yeah, yeah I'm okay just some scrapes and bruises. She told him before noticing the lady walk over to them. It's dangerous to be out here all by yourself, your parents must be worried sick. Mira said, making the girl look down sadly. I don't have any parents, they died when I was a baby. She told her sadly. Unable to stop Mira crouched down and gave the girl a much needed hug which she returned. What's your name sweetie? Mira asked in her mother's voice that seemed to ease the girl. Anko, my name is Anko Midarashi. Anko told Mira. So what is it that you're doing out here? Mira asked. Anko looked down again and began to tell them the tale of her sensei Arachimaru and how he had abandoned her after using her in an experiment for his cursed seal of heaven. By the end of it Mira was fuming with the urge to find the pale bastard and make herself a pair of snakeskin boots. Calming herself she looked at and smiled again. Come on, why don't you come back to camp with us and have something to eat? Mira said, looked up at her hopefully and nodded. Oh and before I forget, my name is Mira Kiratori and this is my son Naruto. Mira said and Naruto smiled and dropped the hen shocking Anko, but decided to wait till they were safe to ask questions, with that done the trio left back for the camp. Later on in the day as the sun began to grow lower in the sky Naruto, Mira and Anko all sat around a fire having just finished lunch and Naruto told his story to the purple-haired girl. 
to say she was shocked and outraged was an understatement as Anko ranted about it for a good 10 minutes afterwards. So what do we do now? Anko asked, looking at the mother and son. Well there are a few options regarding what you want to do, the first and simple is we can drop you off at a town that is not too far from here with some money, so you can get some supplies and head back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Mira said, Anko had told them she was a genin under Rachimaru, and the only reason she hadn't been able to fight today was because her chakra reserves were still exhausted from the curse mark she had received only two days prior, but now we're slowly recharging. What's the other options? Anko asked, she didn't feel like going back to the village yet. You can come with us. Naruto said happily, confusing her. My son and I are on a training trip and have been for the last three years. If you want, we still plan to stay out here for another three, and we have enough supplies that if a third wanted to join us we wouldn't have much trouble. Mira offered. Anko was stunned by the various generous offers that Mira was giving her, and for a moment she was tempted to say yes, however her past with Arachimaru saying the same thing tainted these sort of offers for her and made her narrow her eyes a bit. And how do I know you won't just use me like that damn white snake did? She said in a tone with a slight edge to it. Don't worry Anko, my mom is really nice, she saved me from being alone, and she could do the same for you. Naruto said placing a hand on her shoulder and making her look at him, she could see the truth in his eyes, and after hearing his story about what she did for him, Anko had no doubt the same treatment would be given to her. Okay but, is it alright if I train with you as well? She asked curiously, she wanted to get stronger and eventually kill Orochimaru, and she was hoping that Mira could make her strong like she was doing with Naruto. Of course I can, you won't be able to sign the dragon contract however, as you already have a contract with the snakes however the two species get along decently well, so we shouldn't have any problems. Mira said making Anko almost jump for joy when she heard she could get trained like Naruto. Thank you so much, I promise I won't let you down. Anko said. Alright now your lunch is over, it's time to get back to work. Mira said standing. Right. They both yelled jumping to their feet ready to begin. Hours later after the sun had left the sky and the moon had come out Naruto, Anko and Mira were asleep around a small campfire warming them in the night. The rest of the day had been hard for the two children of the group, seeing how Naruto had begun using the weight training needed to move his dragon fist style up to the next level, as well as begin to train with his elemental affinity, which they had found out was a strong wind type, so she had also given him the beginning exercise to hone wind elemental chakra. Anko was faring no better throughout the day, as Mira made her show her all the jutsus and tojutsu stances that she could perform to get a grasp on the younger girl's power level. Once that was done like Naruto they had discovered her affinity for fire, which made sense as during the training Anko's normal slightly sadistic personality had begun to return which Mira found slightly amusing and Naruto scary, once it was discovered she gave her the basic fire exercise. Naruto rolled over in his sleep bag and gave a yawn as he slowly woke up, the call of nature was yelling in his ears as he sat up to go to the bathroom. Getting out of his sleeping bag he went to a nearby tree and did his business before hearing some rustles in the bushes. Who's there? He said semi-loud, not wanting to wake up his mom and Anko in case it was a simple squirrel, still he did slip into the dragon stances once again. The rustles stopped and he looked around nervous like he was being watched, and the air hung silent, making him all the more tense. Then everything burst to life as a loud series of yells was heard waking the girls, out of the bushes and trees, came a whole heart of bandits that quickly surrounded them and wore victorious looks on their faces. Well look who it is. A bandit said which Naruto recognized as one of the bandits from earlier. That's their boss. Another yelled as a large man wearing fancy robes and fatter than a hippo stepped forward with a smug look. So you're the trio who roughed up my boys earlier, well I can't be having that. The boss said, making the others laugh as he stepped forward and grabbed Anko's chin. Why don't you punks make this easy on yourselves and just give up, we'll take you two women and put you to good use. He said making Anko growl and the bandits laugh harder, however that laugh slowly got smaller as the area around them was slowly building with killer intent. The boss stumbled away from Anko as he was knocked away by Mira, who had a deadly look in her eye and her Adachi already drawn. You come into my camp, threaten my son and his friend, wake me up from my sleep, and then have the balls to demand I give myself to you. She said in a slow even tone as the killer intent increased. Naruto, Anko the two of you stay here, I'm gonna have a chat with this trash. She said before flashing forward faster anyone could see and slice the boss in half with one swing. After a stunned few moments the floodgates opened as every bandit moved to attack them, Mira danced through the ranks, hacking of limbs and heads and piercing anyone else with her sword. Some of the bandits thought it would be smart to attack Anko and Naruto to try and get a bargaining chip on the lady that was cutting down their ranks like wheat, however this proved better on paper than in practice, as the two defended themselves quite well with Anko using her striking shadow snakes and needles, which Naruto became a blur of fists of fury as he pushed his tojutsu style to its limits and the limits of his body. 
As the number dwindled down Naruto began to grow confident they would all make it out of this when he saw something out of the corner of his eye. Anko had her back turned as she took down a bandit with her snakes, and a second one was creeping up behind her with the intent to spear her through the gut with his sword. He didn't think he just reacted as he whipped a kunai out of his holster and threw it before he had time to think and blood flow through the air. He stood there choked as he saw the bandit choke with the kunai jammed in his neck and looked eyes with him for a second before he fell limp to the ground dead. The last of the bandits had been cleaned up by his mother who turned and saw the scene. Naruto remained frozen for a few more seconds before his stomach churned and he rushed to the nearest bush and threw up. Mira appeared by his side and rubbed his back as he continued to throw up and tears leaked from his eyes. I killed him, I killed him and I did it in cold blood. Naruto started to break down before his mom pulled him into a tight hug. Look at me Naruto look at me. She said gently making him look into her eyes. Yes you killed him, but you did not do it in cold blood, if you hadn't then he would have killed Anko, and then possibly you. I know it is a bad thing, but we are shinobi Naruto, and that means that there will be times when we have to kill. But, there is a reason we kill to protect our home, our friends, and our family and make sure people like them. She said pointing to the bandits. Don't not get a chance to hurt others. She said. He sniffed and seemed to calm down at her words. He knew being a shinobi meant he had to take a life at some point, but he never figured it would be like this. Still his mother's words have stopped him from breaking down and made him calm down. He gave her a nod before resting his head on her shoulder. Anko, are you okay? Naruto asked her just to be safe, he didn't want to see her hurt. I'm fine Naruto I promise. She told him looking only a bit shaken from the attack, she had taken bandit lives before during her training with Orochimaru, so something like this wouldn't bug her as much. Come on you two, let's pack up things, we'll find a new camping spot for the night. Mira said having them roll up their sleeping bags, once everything was packed they set out on a quick run away from the scene of death. They ran for 20 or so minutes until they found another small clearing and set up camp again. Once everything was done they went back to sleep however for the rest of the night Naruto stayed close to Anko as she slept, determined to keep his new friend safe from any harm that came at them on the road ahead. Chapter 3. Of Games, Toads and Revelations. A year had passed since the fateful day Anko had joined the mother and son, and things between them had become quite exciting. The duo were good friends and always by each other's side, whether it be to keep each other safe or simply to push the other to train harder. Their individual training had come along nicely as well with Naruto having already mastered the first step of wind manipulation, and even so far as to master a C-rank wind just by the name of Gale Palm, which gave the user a smokescreen to allow them to escape. His Tejutsu was already beyond what the standard Tejutsu style of Konoha was with him deep in the intermediate level, and having the stamina and speed to match it, thanks to the weight training he constantly was under. Anko hadn't been slouching either with her working tirelessly to master the snake style of Tejutsu and progress in her fire manipulation. Being older, she had been given some extra leeway from Mira and already knew two C-rank fire jutsus Fireball Jutsu and Phoenix Flower Jutsu, as well as her striking shadow snakes and summoning contract, all in all she was a force to be reckoned with. Currently the trio were in the tourist town of Tenzaku quarters to take a break from training and enjoy the festival that was happening at the time. Mira had gone off to book them a room while Anko and Naruto now 14 and 10 respectively wandered around the village looking at the sights and shops. Hey Anko, check this out. Naruto said as he found a stall that sold masks and bought himself one that gave him the look of a dragon. Yes Naruto you're freaking obsessed with dragons you know that. Anko said with a laugh even though she found it kind of cute. Of course I'm obsessed with dragons, hello my mom summons dragons and I have a freaking dragon familiar. Besides I bet if we found you something snake related you would be jumping all over it. Naruto said, smirking, until Anko hit him on the back of the head. Oh shut up moron. She said turning away to hide a small blush of embarrassment. Naruto smirked as he picked himself up and paid for the mask. So what do you want to do? He asked her as they kept walking. Um, I don't really know. Why don't we play some games or something until sensei gets us the room? Anko suggested with a shrug, though Mira had tried over and over again to just have Anko by her first name, the snake girl couldn't get into the mincet and just stuck with calling her sensei. Uh, I don't know, most of these games are either just random luck for gambling or rig, so you can't get any of the prizes and just blow money on them. Naruto said seeing right through the scams that people had. You're probably right, but don't forget that we're ninjas in training, so think of this like practice. Anko said with a small smirk, Naruto had learned to be wary of that smirk, as it usually led them to trouble. You sure this is a good idea? He asked cautiously. Of course I am, now come on we have some people to beat. She said as they walked towards the games. As it turned out Naruto had been right about most of the games being rigged, especially the ones where people could win money as the prizes, however that didn't stop Anko and Naruto from cheating their butts off. 
Naruto mostly focused on the luck game since his mom and Anko had said he had the luck of the devil, and Anko being the clever girl she was cheated on most of the physical games by using her ninja training, thus letting the two rack up the bucks. By the time the two were making their way out of the game area, they had easily made over 2000 bunks and were smirking like crazy, however that would be when their luck ran out. Hey. A voice yelled behind them making them stop and turn back nervously, behind them were all the owners of the stalls they hid, and they did not look happy. Something we can help you with fellas. Anko said, trying and failing to act innocent towards the group, Naruto just smiled nervously and began to back up slowly. We know the two of you cheated on our game so hand over the money. The lead guy said as the others seemed to just pull weapons of various sorts out of thin air. Naruto and Anko looked at each other then the crown, chuckling nervously and scratching their heads. They seemed to consider that option for a moment then turned tail and ran at high speeds down the road. Bet them. The shop owner yelled as the stall people chased after the duo intent on getting their money back. I told you something like this would happen. Naruto yelled to Anko as they yelled and ran for their lives, the crowd slowly gaining on them. Just shut up and run like a moron. She yelled back as they ran through the twists and turns of the city. Mira meanwhile had just stepped out of the hotel the trio would be staying at to go and find the kids, when she heard the sounds of yelling getting close to her and looked down the street, she looked just in time to see Anko and Naruto turn down the street and run high tail towards her, with an angry mob of some kind right on their tails. Kids, what did you two do? She yelled clearly shocked and angry about this. No time to talk mom. Naruto yelled as he ran past. We'll be back here as soon as we lose these guys. Anko yelled as they ran down the road, the mob now having passed Mira. After they left Mira looked down the way they came with her eyebrow twitching as she faced Palm. They are ninja and training and should know better by now, so this time I won't be bailing them out. Mira said as she turned and walked the other way fully intending to find the nearest hot spring and forget this whole thing ever happened. She would retrieve what was left of them later. As Naruto and Anko rounded another corner they knew by now they were starting to get tired, even with all the training they had done, this was getting ridiculous at how long this had been going on. Damn what are we gonna do Anko? Naruto yelled just as they rounded another corner. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. She yelled back. Well then allow me to solve the problem. A voice said behind them confusing them until they yelled as they were grabbed by the collar from behind and pulled into a nearby restaurant. A hand was put over their mouths to stop them from yelling by surprise before they quieted as they heard the mob run by. Well that was a close call, the hell did a couple of kids do to get a mob running after them. The man asked to let them go and let them get a look at him finally. The man was something to say the least standing over them at at least 6'2 with wild unkempt white hair that was almost similar to Naruto's in a way in terms of how it looked however he also had a trail of white hair and a ponytail running down his lower bank. He had an older looking face with black eyes and red lines running from them like trails of blood. He had on grey standard shinobi gear under a red jacket and red wooden sandals on his feet, his hands had leather armor plates to protect him and on his forehead was a protector with a kanji for oil on it and a large scroll of some kind hanging from his back, which both kids guessed was a summoning scroll. Naruto of course knew immediately who this guy was from all the time he had spent around the house back in Konoha and how he used to train his sisters, this was Jiraiya the Toad Sage. He looked at them and gave them a cocky smirk and placed his hand on his hips, waiting for them to speak and praise him a bit. Who the hell are you? Naruto asked for Jirei and I'm to fall on his face with a look of pure disbelief. You don't know who I am. He asked as if that was an unbelievable thing. No, I am asking for the sake of the doorway, of course I don't know who you are. He yelled the last part heavy with sarcasm, something he picked up from his mother. Jiraiya smirked and started doing some ridiculous dance. I am the hermit of Mount Mayaboku, the wise and immortal spirit. I am Jiraiya the Toad Sage. He said finishing and expecting them to be impressed. Oh yeah, you're the frog pervert who likes to peep on women and call it research because he writes smut novels mom told us about. Naruto said in a deadpan voice that made Jirei and I'm full yet again. I am not a pervert, I am a super pervert. He yelled earning a disgusted look from every female in the restaurant and getting a kick right to the tender spot from Anko, making him double over in pain. Kid, why would you hit there? He got out past the pain. Because anyone dumb enough to call themselves a super pervert in public deserves a good kick to the balls, she said shamelessly while Naruto was rolling on the ground laughing. After they all had recovered and Jiraiya was no longer in pain, they decided to sit down for a minute. So you two never answered my question, what were a couple of kids doing running from a mob of angry villagers with weapons? He asked them. We may have gone to the gaming street of the festival and cheated them out of their cash. Anko said rubbing the back of her head and expecting him to be upset, but to her surprise he started laughing. Oh that is just too good, an entire caravan of stalls robbed blind by a couple of gawkies. Jiraiya said as he laughed, after calming down he smiled at them. So the two of you have names or what? He asked. Oh my name is Anko. Anko told him. 
and my name is Tenzo Kuratori. Naruto said giving his fake name, but he didn't expect the reaction he got when Jiraiya nearly choked on his drink. Kid, did you say your last name is Kuratori? He asked, hitting his chest, to be able to speak again. Yeah how come? Naruto asked him although he had an idea, his mom had told him that she was friends with Jiraiya and Sanadi after all. Is your mother's first name Mira? He asked, confirming Naruto's idea. Yeah she is, why do you two know each other? Naruto said keep up the act. Hell yeah she's an old friend of mine, and I've been looking for her for a while, think you could take me to her. Jiraiya asked. Anko and Naruto looked at each other for a moment debating on it before nodding their heads and leaving the restaurant. After getting the address of where their mother was from the hotel the two kids lead Jiraiya to a hot spring, where he sprouted a perverted look on his face as he went around to the woman's side of the building and peeked in through the cracks, seeing Mira there soaking in the water. Yeah that's her alright. He said with a perverted giggle. Dude stop peeping on my mom. Naruto yelled. Oh relax kid. He said going again only to come face to face with Mira looking quite pissed. Jiraiya, if you don't stop looking at me right now and wipe that perverted look off your face, I will summon Infernius and feed you to him. She said in a deadly calm voice that made him jump away in fright. After Mira had gotten dressed and came out the group walked back to the hotel room so they could get a bit of privacy because she had a feeling Jiraiya needed to talk about something important to her. So what is this all about? She asked while sitting down on her bed while Anko and Naruto sat next to her, Jiraiya was on the other bed facing them. Do you mind sending the kids out, this is kind of important. He asked only to receive a glare from all three of them. No, my children don't need to have secrets kept from them so whatever you have to tell me you tell them as well. She said in a tone that dared him to argue with her. He sighed and looked at her. Okay here it is, myself, Sanadi, Minato, and Kashina need you to come back to the village. Why? She asked with a raised eyebrow. He looked at her and just from the look on his face, she could tell he was feeling guilty about something. You remember Naruto, Kashina and Minato's son. Well about four years ago now he ran away from the village and we have been trying to find him ever since. He said in a somber tone. Why did he run away? She asked curious, obviously she knew, but she wanted to see what Jiraiya said. Listen, none of us are proud of this fact and we all have been beating ourselves up over it ever since, you know of course about Naruko and Mido being the containers of the nine-tailed fox. Well for some years myself and the others have been getting the girls ready for when they become ninja and preparing them to be, unfortunately in sheer stupidity, none of us noticed Naruto slowly drifting away from the picture. Jiraiya said wincing when he got hit on the back of the head. Are you telling me, you all neglected the poor boy? She growled clearly still mad about it even though she knew. Yes we did, like I said none of us are proud in fact we're all feeling the shame of it since by the time we realized he was already gone. Mira everyone has been a wreck since his disappearance, Minato has thrown himself into his work and tries to do the best he can to fix his mistake while well, having found him to be on an ongoing B-rank mission. He wants his son back so much it's almost painful to watch. Sanadi has gotten into drinking hard after realizing what she did and no one can seem to break her out of it. Kishina has been the worst though, outside of myself and the girl she doesn't talk to many people and has been spending all her time helping the girls. He admits. And why has she been doing that? Mira asked. The girls. The girls have pretty much thrown themselves into training. They have put their heart and soul into getting stronger so they can one day find their brother and beg for forgiveness for how they pushed him away. Jirei admits shocking the trio, especially Naruto, he had no idea the girls even would do something like that. We all screwed up Mira. Trust me we get that, now we're trying to do everything we can to bring Naruto home and make up for every bonehead mistake we made. Please we need you to come back and help us find him. Jiraiya said, only now did she realize how bad he sounded. You really all want to make it up to him this badly. She said and he nodded. Well I'm sorry I can't come back home just yet, I still need to finish my son's training and we have another two years. She said, before Jiraiya could protest, she stopped him. However I would use my dragons to try and find him and if I do I will tell him what you told me and bring him home. She said making him sigh in relief and nod. Thank you Mira, I know you're probably fuming at all of us. He said. Oh I am and don't be surprised when I give Kishina and Minato a dragon sized goose egg on their idiotic heads when I get back. She warned. But, I'm grateful for you doing this. He said before standing up. I best get going, one of my contacts may have a lead. I need to follow up on some other important business. I'll see you around hopefully. He said before leaving the room. Once she was sure he had left, Mira locked the door and looked at Naruto. What do you think sweetie? She asked him. In truth Naruto didn't know what to think, he had never dreamed that he would hear his parents actually missed him and wanted him to come back and that everyone, even his sisters, were doing everything they could to bring him home. I guess, I don't really know what I should be thinking right now. I never even dreamed something like this would happen, but I don't know if it's too good to be true. He admitted. 
Mira came over and sat with them, and both she and Anko gave him a hug. I don't know right now if you should believe them or not, however that is not my choice and lies with you. So what is it right now you want to do? Mira said. Naruto thought it over for a minute, on one hand he wanted to go back to Konoha and see if it was true, but at the same time he was hesitant it was a lie. After a moment he decided. I think right now I want to finish my training trip with you mom, and then when we go back home I'll stay in public and find out if this is true or not. Naruto said making Mira laugh and ruffle his hair. That's my boy. She said smiling, he was really starting to think like a true ninja now, and she was so proud of him. Now come on you two, let's go enjoy the rest of the festival and this time no mobs. She warned them. Yeah we got you mom. Naruto said as he and Anko jumped off the bed and walked out of the room with her fully intent on seeing what the rest of the festival was like without them running through it being chazzed. The rest of the day was spent with the three of them goofing off and having a nice time while enjoying what they had at the festival, they even went to a local hot spring afterwards from family time. At night they sat on top of the hotel and watched a firework display that was going off above them happy as could be. Soon the evening was done and they went back into their room and got ready for bed, after the lights went out Anko and Mira went to sleep, but for a while, Naruto stayed up and thought over what he had been told by both his mom and Jiraiya. They do care about me and want to make amends, I guess a lesser person would hold on to a grudge or something. He thought before smiling wide. But I'm not like that, I'll keep getting stronger till I'm ready to show them, and when I do, if what they said was the truth, then I'll give them a second chance. He thought. But that final thought he drifted off to sleep, his final image before slipping off was of his old family and his new one sitting together as one. A dream he would one day make real. Chapter 4. The New Dragon Summoner. Alright Naruto listen up because today we begin the most critical piece of your training with the time we have left. Mira said, drawing the attention of her son. It had been roughly six months since the encounter with Uraya and the startling realization of his family trying to find him and make amends and looking for them. With only a year and a half left of their training, it was time to start working on the most critical and time-consuming piece of it. So what are we working on mom? He asked, he was excited to learn something new, as recently he had mastered the intermediate level of the Dragon Knight style and learned another C rank wind jutsu by the name of a great breakthrough. He was ready to start on something else. And is it something I can learn? Anko asked out of curiosity, like Naruto she had been training like crazy and had nearly mastered her snake style to jutsu and was now just working on refining it. She had also added a third C rank fire fire bullet to round out everything. Sadly Anko this is something I cannot teach you as it requires something very special, Naruto it's finally time for you to sign the dragon summoner contract. Mira said, slipping the large scroll off her back and laying it down in front of him. Naruto's eyes widened as he stared in wonder at the large scroll, he had been dreaming for years now of adding his name to it and finally becoming a proper dragon summoner, and now the day had finally arrived. You sure mom? He asked half believing it was a dream. The answer she unrolled the scroll to a blank spot and showed it to him. Ed sure sweetie, your name will join those on here so that one day you can leave a mark on history as well. She said. Naruto nodded excitedly and listened as his mom explained how to write his name in blood before pressing his dominant hand under it, biting his thumb to draw blood. Naruto quickly wrote down his name and stamped his hand before the scroll rolled up and Mira picked it back up. Well done Naruto. She said knowing the dragons had accepted his name. Welcome to the summon club Neru. Anko said using the nickname she had made for him. Now then there is only one thing left to do. She said and quickly bit her thumb and drew blood, flashing through some hand signs, and she swiped the blood on the ground. Reverse summon. She said and the usual summon circle appeared only instead of a dragon appearing out of the smoke that vanished into it. Naruto had shut his eyes and coughed when the smoke had surrounded him, waving it out of his eyes until he could open them and see. When he did he was shocked at what he saw. They were no longer in the forest that had been moments ago, but were now replaced by the scene of mountain peaks spread out before him. Wow. He said taking it all in. Indeed, welcome to Dorgan plus Ku, the home of the great dragon clan. Mira said, making him turn to see her and Anko looking the other way, in front of them on top of a mountain peak, was a grand castle seemingly built into the side of the mountain, and it was massive. So big it could easily fit the leaf village in it three times. Come, we have to meet the king of the mountain and begin the last step of you becoming a summoner. Mira said, leading the way. They began walking for an hour until they came to a large stone bridge three times bigger than anything they had seen, after crossing it, they arrived at a set of massive double doors and two blue-scaled dragons guarding them. Halt. Who goes there? One yelled seeing them. I am Mira Kuratori, dragon summoner, and I have come to speak with Lord Infernus. She said in a voice that almost demanded respect from those who heard it. The dragons bowed their heads when she said her name. Forgive us Milady we did not recognize you, you have changed much since you last visited the mountain. He said and the two opened the doors for them. 
When they walked inside Naruto and Anko were in awe at the sheer sight before them, they stood in the middle of a massive throne room, with dragons of all shapes, sizes and colors coming and going. Some walked on four legs and other two, some carried weapons or scrolls or wore ceremonial armor. However the true sight was in front of them, at the head of the room sitting on a throne made of stone and gold stood a red dragon at least as tall as the monument in the village. His scales were crimson red, and he wore golden samurai armor on his chest, shoulders, arms, knees and legs, giving him the appearance of a seasoned warrior, he stood on two legs with a red and gold helmet sitting next to him, along with the largest katana they had ever seen. This was Infernus the Sun Samurai, the leader of the dragon clan, and the person summoned of Mira. Mira it has been too long since you returned to the mountain. Infernus said after he saw them and stood, his voice was old and powerful, yet had an air of grandfatherly wisdom. Good to see you as well Infernus, sorry I haven't had much need to call you into battle as of late. Mira said, smirking. Ah worry nothing about it, I understand you don't need to call me every time. Now I take it by the fact I was just informed a new summoner has signed the contract, this isn't a social visit for drinks. Infernus said. You would be correct. She said before moving Naruto so he was in front of her. This is my adopted son Naruto, he has just signed the contract, and I request you allow him to face the trials to become a full summoner. Mira said. Infernus leaned down and inspected the boy, giving Naruto a sniff here or there. For the most part the blonde stayed calm and still, although that could be just because he was freaking out about being in the presence of a titanic dragon that could eat him and not even feel full. Mai can smell a strong amount of chakra in him, not to mention he already has a familiar in my grandson Taka. Very well if he so chooses he may take the trials to become a summoner. Infernus said. Um excuse me Mr. Infernus, what exactly are these trials I have to take? Naruto asked half curious and half nervous about the answer. The trials are a test of the mind, body and soul, to see if you have the requirements needed to be a true wielder of the clan. No two summoners ever face the same trial, so I cannot tell you definitively what they will be, however be warned boy, should you fail these trials, you will never be accepted as a full dragon summoner, and as such will never be able to summon any dragon at all. Infernus explained. Naruto looked conflicted at the news of this, not only was he going off into the unknown to face these trials, but if he failed them then he could never be their summoner and probably disappoint his mother. Still though something inside him was burning bright, encouraging him not to be afraid and telling him he could pass whatever they threw at him. Alright then Lord Infernus bring it on, I'll face whatever you throw at me and prove I can overcome it and keep going forward. Naruto yelled with a determined smile on his face and a confident look in his eye. Infernus reared up and gave a deep bellow of a laugh. I must say Mira you may have adopted the boy, but he certainly has your spunk and guts, very well then Naruto. Infernus said moving and showing a door was built into his throne. Pass through that door and begin your trials, may the eternal flame gild you. Infernus said. Naruto looked at his mom and Anko, who gave him smiles and a thumbs up which he returned, he then took a breath and walked over to the door and threw it open revealing the inky darkness. Summing up his courage he plunged headlong into the depths and the door shut behind him. The first thing Naruto noticed were the torches on the wall that ignited as soon as the door shut behind him, lighting the path forward, he began to walk unsure where he would end up but knew he wouldn't turn back. For some time he walked he wasn't honestly sure how long he followed the cave walls until finally a light appeared ahead of him. Exiting the tunnel he saw before him was a large open cavern with a waterfall running to one side, in the middle of it was a ring shape similar to a sparring ring. Standing in the middle was a brown Chinese dragon with long whiskers that wore standard shinobi gear and seemed to be waiting for him. Ah a new summoner candidate, quite some time it has been since I tested the last. The dragon said. Are you going to give me my first trial? Naruto asked, stepping into the ring. I am indeed a young hatchling, I am Twi Ken the master of the Dragon Knight style. If you wish to move on and continue your test you will need to defeat me in a spar of Tujutsu. Twi Ken said slipping into the opening stances of the style. Naruto nodded and bowed to him first as his mother taught him. I would be honored to be Twi Ken. Naruto said before doing the same, they stood facing each other for a minute before a breeze passed between them. Then they rushed forward. Naruto had spent years fighting against his mother to learn this style, and by her own right she was a master, but nothing could prepare him for fighting a true dragon master of the style. He dodged and weaved through two Ken's punches and kicks and retaliated in kind, aiming for the joints and weak spots of the body to try and uncenter the dragon and give himself the advantage however he could not. He twisted and ducked an axe kick and aimed for the master's stomach, yet the strike did not land, again and again he did everything he could but to no avail. It was then that he began to notice something odd about the dragon's style. As they moved Naruto noticed that two men's fighting had holes in it, spots that if he decided to take advantage of could truly take the dragon down, but to do so, he would have to break his style, as they were spots that weren't normally aimed for. His mind and body yelled at him to aim for the spots, and he was about to when something in his mind surfaced. 
remember Naruto, Dragon Knight style is a style of honor. You do not defeat an opponent by using cheap tricks and hitting places that would be considered unjust, you win by showing your own strength alone. The memory of his mother when he first began to learn the style said. But that thought in mind Naruto shook his head and pressed on keeping to his style and ignoring the weak spots, after 20 minutes of sparing the two broke apart and panted clearly out of breath. My my this is impressive, none have ever lasted this long against me. Twy can Sam with a laugh. Atlas not without exploiting my openings. He said shocking Naruto. That's right, young hatchlings. I left those spots open to you for a reason. I wanted to see if you would stay true to the way of the dragon, or if you would allow yourself to break stance and strike my vulnerable spots, even though they were considered unjust to hit. I am happy to say that because you helped you honor your past first trial. Twy can said moving so Naruto could pass. Shocked and delighted, Naruto nodded and bowed again. Thank you Master Twy Ken. He said before walking forward and watched as the waterfall parted and revealed another cavern, with new vigor he pressed forward. This time no torches lit his way as instead crystals glowed embedded into the walls and showed him the path, keeping on guard in case something decided to jump him, he moved forward and kept an eye on everything. Again he walked for some time with the crystals lighting his way before another entrance opened and led him into a smaller cavern that glowed multicolor with the colors of the crystals. Unlike before no dragon waited for him, and it seemed as if no one else had entered the cavern in quite some time. This has to be a test of some kind. Naruto thought as he walked in and kept his guard up, he didn't trust some dragon to come out of the wall and attack him. He began to explore the room looking at all the various crystals to see if perhaps one needed to be opened as he didn't see any exit. When that didn't work he took a glance on the floor and noticed the stone was carved with intricate patterns that all seemed to lead to the center of the room. In the center was a small pedestal with a design of a dragon flying high above the rest of the world on it, curious he took a step onto the pedestal and kneeled down to examine it. However, when he did the lines on the floor glowed and a wall of light shot up trapping him on the pedestal. Around him the room became picture black leaving him standing on the pedestal unable to move off of it and surrounded by the still visible crystals. They're such a joke. He heard a voice say and turned to see where it came from, he spotted then a crystal that had the reflection of his mother on it. Why I even bothered to adopt you that day is beyond me, you're a weak excuse for a shinobi. She said with a sneer. And you always will be. Another said, turning this time he saw Anko. You're pathetic moron, why I'm still friends with you is a mystery. I guess I should finally get over that pity I have for you. The reflection said. Their words cut Naruto deep as he looked shocked and heartbroken by what they said. You were never even worth the time. This time it was his real father and mother talking from another pair of crystals. Why waste our lives babysitting you when we had our girls to think of? Kishina said said. You life so much easier by running away we wished you had done it years ago. Minato said. How like we would ever want you back. Again this time it was his sisters at his age. Pushing you away was the best thing we ever did. Naruko told him. You should just stop playing ninja and grow up. Nito said. One by one the crystals filled with voices of his family, loved ones and everyone who had been in his past as they shouted hatred at him and called him everything from loser to weak. Naruto was slowly breaking down, unable to block the voices out, and by now he was in tears. However the worst had yet to come. Finally when only one crystal remained Naruto was on his knees trying to block out the voices and telling himself that what they said wasn't true, but it was hard, why did you even pretend it would be any different? A new voice said joining the rest, he looked up in shock and saw it was him from five and a half years ago dressed like he was the night he ran away. You could never hope to get stronger and be a part of that family or any family, you're weak, pathetic, a coward. His younger self said. Naruto couldn't take much more of this, he was ready to give up and just run away when all of a sudden something sparked inside him. A burning fury hotter than he had ever felt fueled his resolve and sank courage in his veins, and then he snapped. Enough. He roared louder than ever before, and a ripple passed through the images silencing them and making them look shocked. I don't care what any of you say, all you are is empty words. You can say I'm weak over and over until your voice breaks and it still won't change a thing. He said rising to his feet. Because in the end it's my life no one else and I'll see it through to the end, I will get stronger and I'll prove to my family I can be a hero too and I won't let anyone drag me down with words. So go ahead and keep talking, I'm done listening to because no matter what I will keep pressing forward. He yelled now fully standing his eyes burning passion and courage. The reflections all seemed to smile and one by one faded from view until only the one on the large middle crystal was left. However it was no longer his six-year-old form, but his older male sixteen surrounded by his family, both halves of his family. Then you've proven yourself, you've shown no matter what is said to you, what is thrown at you, you'll just keep pushing forward and never let yourself be stopped. You've passed the second trial, now go and continue to soar higher until you find peace. His older self said before they faded and the crystal cracked and shattered revealing a doorway. 
Smiling he wiped the tears off his face and moved forward with a new hope of one day, making that scene a reality. He pressed onward through the new cave guided by a glow set in the floor he couldn't explain, before long however the tunnel stopped and he saw a bright light ahead as well as heard the muffled sound of cheers. Forging ahead he walked confidently and passed through the light. Shielding his eyes for a second while he adjusted he then lowered his arm and gazed at the newest sight before him. He was in an arena that dwarfed the one back in the leaf village by a considerable margin, filling the stands were dragons of all breed and color cheering and shouting as he walked into the arena and looked around. Above him on a throne was Infernus himself gazing down at him with a calculating gaze as he smirked at the yellow-haired boy. Naruto Kuritori Uzumaki. Infernus said addressing him and shocking him with the fact he knew his former last name. Y.O.U. have passed two of the trials, needed to become a summoner of the Dragon Clan, now you stand before myself and this crowd for the final test. Infernus said and stood, reaching next to him, he picked up a large sword made of gold with a design of flames and threw it into the area. It shrunk as it flew and landed in front of him gleaming wickedly. Take the sword in hand boy for this is your final test, in order to become a full summoner you must kill the previous and take their power. Infernus said. Naruto was horrified and to make matters worse he saw a reflection in the sword, turning he saw his mother kneeling on the ground bound in chains. It's alright sweetie, go ahead and do it I'm ready. She said. Almost on autopilot Naruto picked up the sword and walked to his mother until he stood over her and looked down. Mom? He said numb and scared, he didn't want to do this, but it was like he had to. Something in the back of his mind driving him to do it and take the power he needed. It's okay Naruto, I knew this day would come eventually. Go ahead, I'm ready to go, I want you to have the power so you can prove yourself to Kishina, Minato, your sisters and all of Konoha, she said, closing her eyes. Naruto breathed heavily as he raised a sword, he didn't know why he would do this power was nothing without his mother. That voice in his head screaming at him to do it, but then all the time he had spent with Mira broke through the haze as he remembered everything they had done. He remembered all the love she had given him and all the things she had shown him, was he really about to give that all up for power? His eyes flashed open as he made his choice, and with a yell he swung the sword down, however the blade did not cleave into Mira and instead impaled the ground in front of her. Forget it, I refuse to take power if it means I become a murderer to the person who loves me. He yelled, whipping around and sending a glare at Infernus. Boy choose carefully, continue down this path, and you will never have the power of the dragons. Infernus said sending a glare right back only with more heat. I don't care, my family will always come before power. He yelled back unwavering. The two stared each other down for what felt like hours as they each tried to break the other, finally a smirk grew on Inferno's face. Dragons of Dorgan plus Kuai give you our newest summoner. Infernus roared as the swarm of dragons burst into cheers and yells of excitement. Wait what? Naruto said quietly since he was confused. Naruto, there are many things we dragons hold in high regard honor, perseverance, bravery. But above all else we hold compassion and loyalty in the highest regards, to a dragon there is no worse come than those who kill for power, and you have just proven yourself better than that. Inferna said smiling at him. He was stunned for a moment before he grew a smile and cheered, he had done it and he had passed the test. He was a dragon summoner. I'm so proud of you. Mira said, hugging him from behind. Way to go Naruto. Ank yelled from where she was sitting by the inferno's throne. He smiled and hugged his mom back. Now then let a celebration be prepared, tonight we feast and celebrate, and tomorrow we prepare to train a new summoner in the ways of the dragon. Inferna said, making them all cheer again. Naruto smiled, tomorrow he would begin his training anew with the dragons. He would get stronger and prepare for what lay ahead in a year and a half time. Look out cause soon Naruto Kiritori will be home. Chapter 5 The Dragon's Triumphant Return In the early morning hours outside the gate of the Hidden Leaf Village, a pair of gate guards were half asleep in their post, wondering if something would happen. One suddenly looked at the road and squinted, in the distance he could make out three figures walking towards the gate, though he couldn't get details. Two were clearly female however, as he could tell from the way he walked and the third was male, what was interesting was the male seemed to bob his head and move in an odd way, as if he was hearing a beat, only he could and was moving to it. As they drew closer the two gate guards got ready just in case however, when they saw who it was, they couldn't help but be shocked. Mind if we go to you too? The middle female asked, handing them official paperwork that was needed to enter the limits of Kanoha. The two were just too stunned to say anything and just nodded, letting them in their eyes never leave the male as they walked. Was that really the same kid we saw all those years ago, he's changed a lot. One said. No doubt about it, that kid is something else. The other said. Back with the trio they were heading in the direction of the Hokage Tower, as two of them had business there, however, when they reached a split they stopped. You go ahead to the academy and get your team, the teacher already has all the paperwork from what I sent to Minato, so you will be safe to enter. The lead female said, handing him a headband with a village symbol which the male put on his forehead. Thanks mom, I'll see you after the team selection. 
The male said before flashing off faster than most could even keep track of. Heads are gonna roll when he gets there, you know that right sensei. Anko said, watching as her best friend brother figures it to weigh. Oh I'm well aware, he's a Kuratori now we tend to do that. Now let's get to the Hokage Tower, I feel like knocking the heads of my idiotic friends. On the other side of the village in the Ninja Academy, students were milling around the classroom talking and waiting for their teacher Iruka Yamino to show up so they could finally be placed on genin teams and begin their ninja career. Among them a young boy by the name of Shikamarinara, who was currently fast asleep on his desk while next to him was his best friend, Choji Akimichi was munchkin on a bag of chips, across the room sat two more boys Kiba Inuzuka and Shino Aburam, were sitting and waiting for the teacher. Above them sat a shy girl by the name of Hinata Hayuga, who looked very nervous around the others and kept glancing over at someone. The other side of the room was packed with girls who at the moment were frowning over a dark-haired boy named Sasuke Ichiha, with his two leading fan girls, Ino Yamanaka and Sakura Haruna right in front. However who stood out the most or rather who tried to stay in the back and did were two other girls, the two were obviously sisters, yet you could tell they had very opposite personalities. One was a blonde with long hair tied up in a set of twin tails that reached surprisingly down to her shoulders and had deep sea blue eyes, she wore a black shirt with a black and orange coat over it that was unzipped, showing her decent bust size which she was quite proud of, she also wore black spandex shorts and knee guards, as well as a pair of shinobi sandals. The second girl had much shorter crimson red hair and light violet eyes which were covered by a set of black glasses, her outfit was more manageable, being a maroon zipped up coat over a mesh shirt and bra, she wore maroon pants and black ninja sandals as well. The two of them were Naruko and Mito Yuzumaki Namikas, the twin sisters of the current homage, and as of right now they look tired. The two girls had once upon a time been different, full of life and energy like any child should, however over the years they had changed because of a mistake they made, the mistake of pushing their brother away. Flashback. It was the morning after the twin sixth birthday, and the two of them were still in high spirits after such a fun party the night before, with all their friends and family being there to celebrate with them, now they were up and out of bed ready to begin the day. The two were heading down to the kitchen when they stopped outside of a door, they knew whose room it was, it belonged to their brother Naruto. The twins loved their brother with all their heart, even though they didn't show it a lot and didn't even realize it, now however the two seemed to be thinking over something as they ran downstairs with a curious look on their faces. Morning girls. Kishina, their mother, said to them as they took their seats at the table, next to them was their father Minato, who ruffled their hair as they walked by before finishing a report that he had to do, he was very grateful to Mira for the coffee earlier, as it let him get his work done and be with his family. Morning mom, dad. They said before sitting down and decided to ask their question. Hey mom, where's Nero? Mito asked, using the old nickname she had for him. He's probably still asleep from the party last night. Minato said finishing his work and looking at them, the girls then got even more confused. But dad, Naruto wasn't at the party last night. Naruko said, making her parents stop. What do you mean of course he was, we same him with. Kishina said, however, then she stopped and she went over her memory of the party last night. The more she thought about it, the more she realized she couldn't remember seeing Naruto at the party last night. She frowned and looked at her husband who was reaching the same conclusion. I mean of course he was there, he had to be since he had to unwrap his presence. Minato said however his voice sounded off, like it was a question rather than a statement. Of course I mean we did get him. Um, what did we get Naruto for his birthday? Kishina asked, now she sounded a little scared, why couldn't they remember getting him a present or anything for his own birthday? They clearly remembered buying the girls a bunch of presents for their shinobi training and other things, but nothing for him. Come to think of it, what was the last time we saw Naruto? Minato asked, the two looked at each other and immediately stood and ran upstairs to the girls not far behind them wanting answers as well. Naruto sweetie, are you up? Kishina asked, knocking on the door, however no one answered so she peeked inside. The room was empty of anyone and looked rather bare, walking in with her husband and daughters behind her she looked around. Naru. The girl said looking around trying to see if he was playing a game, when they realized the room was indeed bare, Minato went and searched the house for him. Kishina was now very worried, where could her son be? Glancing at his nightstand where she knew he kept his favorite stuffed dragon instead she saw a note and picked it up. Dear mom and dad, by the time you read this I'll probably be gone and you won't have to worry about me being a bother anymore. I know you love my sisters more than me since you forgot about me, so I'll just save you the trouble. I don't know if you'll even read this, but still I have to write it, I love you, but I don't want to be invisible anymore. Goodbye. Naruto, Ashina had tears in her eyes by the time she finished reading it, he ran away because they forgot him. She couldn't believe it and quickly called Minato who came in and read it as well. It can be true can it, we wouldn't forget about him. She said but, even as she did she looked over her memories and realized something. 
over the years Naruto seemed to just fade out of her mind, and she couldn't recall any memories of recently with him in it, no family outings, no training sessions, not even dinner with him. She let out a sob as she realized he was telling the truth, they had just up and forgot him, and now he was gone. Bonato wasn't doing much better as he forced back his own tears, how could he do this to his own son? He knew the hardships of growing up alone, and now he had done the same thing to Naruto without even realizing it. We need to find him, find him and bring him home so we can apologize to him and make this right. Minato said before vanishing to the tower to start a search. Ashina could only sit on her son's old bed and sob as the gravity of her mistake hit her. She felt two weights get on her laps and looked to see her girls had gotten on and hugged her when she returned. Don't worry mom, we promise we'll find Nero. Nito said, trying to help. Yeah well make sure to bring him home and be a brother again. Naruko said. Then flashback, that had been six years ago and in six years nothing, no sign of their brother anywhere, no matter how hard they looked. Their family hadn't felt whole since that day, their father was constantly working when he didn't spend time with them to try and find their brother, their mother was an emotional wreck, with one training the girls being able to help. The girls had trained non-stop with their parents, Uncle Jiraiya and Aunt Sanadi, to learn everything they could so when they became full ninja they could go and find their brother. Naruko still had somewhat of her childish nature when she pulled pranks on people, but now it seemed almost full, Nito became closed off to people other than her family and spent her days learning, they wanted him back more than anyone and would gladly beg for his forgiveness if it meant he would come. The two along with the rest of the class were suddenly pulled from their thoughts when the door opened, assuming it was Aruka sensei they all looked at the door, but what they saw surprised them. It was a young boy about their age however he stops 5'3 and has an impressive amount of muscle for a 12 almost 13 year old. He had black hair that ended in golden yellow spikes and his eyes were split one the same blue as Naruko and the other a piercing amber that screamed intimidating. He wore a black shirt with what looked like an orange dragon head on the front, black cargo pants with a lot of pockets, knee and shin guards, and black armored combat boots that looked like they were designed for ass kicking. He also wore a midnight black trench coat that had the same symbol as his shirt, only with a pair of orange wings added to it. The top it off on his back was a massive broadsword easily as big as him, it was a crystal-like green with two spikes for the guard and looked intimidating as hell. All in all only one word described this kid, Badis. Hey, this is the team selection room. He asked. Over at the tower things were hectic to say the least, Mira had done as she intended and walked in. The first thing she did as promised when she saw Minato and Kashina along with the other Jonin senseis was walk right up to them and give them a good sized goose egg from her smacks to the back of their heads. Did you have to hit so freaking hard? Minato actually whined as he nursed his sore head, his wife wasn't much better and he was pretty sure he heard a few Jonin snickering. Yes I did, I'm hoping it will finally get the point across that I am not your babysitter. I leave for six years to train my son and come back to find you neglected yours. Mira said with a lot of heat. Mira we know what we did was wrong and believe me we are doing everything we can to find him. Kishina told her, Mira knew her friend so she knew she was telling the truth, but still. I'll believe it when I see it. She said having cooled slightly. Anyways before that happened I believe we were finishing the team selections. Kakashi, your team will be made up of Sasuke Ichiha, Sakura Haruno, and Sai. Your team will be Kiba Inuzuka, Shino Aburam, and Hinata Higwa. Asuma, your team is Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akamichi, and Ino Yamanaka. Finally Kashina, your team will be made up of Naruko Uzumaki Namikas, Nido Uzumaki Namikas, and Tenzo Kuratori. Report to the academy and pick up your teams, dismissed. Minato said, the Jonin nodded and left heading to the academy, leaving only him, Kashina and Mira. You took a Genin team with your girls and my son, shows a bit of favoritism doesn't it? Mira asked, surprised by her friend's choice. I had to, the girls wouldn't train under anyone but me. They only really trust their family these days, and I'm even nervous how they will react to being with your son. Kashina admitted. I'm sure they will be fine, I best go. I have things to take care of. Minato, I need to speak with you later, as I have a guest with me that will want to be put on the shinobi force. Mira said, surprising him, he nodded, and both Mira and Kashina flashed away to their various destinations. The class was silent as they observed the new boy and wondered who he was, finally the silence was broken. Thus who the hell are you? Kiba half asked and half yelled. Name's Tenzo, I'm the new guy here. Naruto replied calmly, making sure to keep his cover. If you knew then how come you're here, this is the team selection not a class idiot. Sakura yelled, making him look at her and point to his forehead. I'm here for those pinky, I'm a full genin like all of you. He replied like it was obvious. Then how come none of us have ever seen you here before? Ino asked. Special circumstances, my mother took me out of the village for six years for training. I'm more skilled than most genin, and since I passed the written exam with a perfect score I'm here. Naruto said, shocking them all, who was this kid? 
before more comments could be made Aruka finally showed up. Alright everyone, sit down and take a seat. He said clearly not giving them a choice, he then noticed Naruto. Ah you must be Mira's son Tenzo, have a seat you're registered like all the others. Haruka said, making him nod and head to the top row next to his sisters, he recognized them even after all this time and was surprised how different they looked and acted. Now as of today you are all shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village, from this point onward you are genin. Grow stronger and never stop improving yourselves because I expect each and every one of you to make it far in life. Haruka said, he then began to tell the names of the various teams that had been made. Some were happy like Sakura and some upset like Ino, Naruto turned out until he heard his name. And finally Team 11 will be Naruko Uzumaki Namikas, Mido Uzumaki Namikas and Tenzo Kuroidoi under the Jonin sensei of Kishina Uzumaki. Haruka said, some of the class was clearly mad that both the two Kanoichi of the class, along with a mysterious newcomer, were on the same team. Naruto was surprised he got paired with his sisters and glanced over at them giving them a smile, Naruko returned it somewhat, while Mido just kept her face blank. Soon however things were quieted when a burst of smoke appeared in the middle of the room, and there stood the wife of the Yandame Hokage herself, dressed in a battle dress, Anbu pants and black sandals, with her legendary katana crimson princess at her belt. Alright Team 11, meet me on the roof in 10 minutes. She said before vanishing again. Not wanting to be late the trio stood and walked to the door before opening it and heading out, thankfully it was a short walk, and soon they reached the roof and looked around for her. Naruko and Mido were glad they were able to have their mother as a sensei, since they didn't know if they could deal with any of the others without flipping out and laying into them. Naruto was once again shocked at just how different his mother looked, yes she still had the same attitude and stride he remembered, but he had learned to read people, and he could tell she was hiding a lot of pain under those emotions. The trio walked over to one side and saw that Kishina was sitting there waiting for them. Take a seat, two of you are my daughters and Tenzo. I'm hoping your mother has at least mentioned me, but I would still like to do some introductions. Kashina said. When the trio sat down they nodded and looked at her to go first. My name is Kashina Yuzumaki. I'm not going to be telling you my age anytime soon. My hobbies are cooking, my friends, my family, training, and gardening. My dislikes are perverts, people who hurt others for the hell of it, cold weather and sour food. My dream is to make the three of you into the strongest ninja I can and one day hopefully bring my son home. She said. Naruto soaked up that information, she really did want to bring him back to her, he nodded and glanced at Naruko as she started. Alright my name is Norko Yuzumaki Namikas and never forget it. I'm 12 years old right now. My likes are pranks, training, family, Ichiraku Raymond, and being with my sister. My dislikes are store-bought Raymond, Sasuke Ichiha, perverts and those who give up on a comrade or someone in need. My dream is to one day become Hokage like my dad and to make my family whole. Naruko said. Naruko I thought we talked about this pointless hatred of Sasuke. Kishina said with a sigh. Hey when he stops being an egotistical ass bent on avenging his father and the part of his clan that was killed by killing his brother, instead of spending time with his mother, then I will. She said stubbornly before looking at Mido. My name is Mido Yuzumaki Namikas and like my sister I am 12. My likes are reading, training, swimming, my family, and Raymond. My dislikes are bullies, perverts, rainy days, and those who hurt their family. My dream is to one day be like my aunt Sanadi as a medic genius and like my sister make my family whole again she said without much emotion in her voice. Naruto took a few moments to soak up the info that they had just said, all of them had said they wanted to make their family whole again, and that meant bringing him back and making amends just like what Jiraiya had told them a few years back. He was surprised they did yet he was still wary, action spoke louder than words, and until then he would keep himself hidden as Tenzo. My name is Tenzo Kuratori and I'm 12 years old. My hobbies are training, nature, sword fighting, my mom, my best friend, my dragons and good food. My dislikes are those who hurt others for power or pleasure, perverts, rain and cold weather, since you can't train, and instant food. My dream is to one day be the greatest dragon summoner in history and to make someone proud of me. Naruto said. Who is it you want to make proud of? Mido asked. I can't say, not right now at least. He said they found it odd but dropped it since everyone had secrets. Oh right now that those are done we can move on to the important part of this. Kishina told them. The true gen in exam right mom? Naruko said. That's correct, an exam designed to see if the three of you are truly ready to become full ninja or if you need to be sent back to the academy. However this exam was chosen by me and since two of you are my daughters and were trained by me and one of you is my best friend's son, I have decided we will be ramping up how hard this exam is going to be. She informed them standing. What do we have to do? Naruto asked. I'll tell you when the time comes, for now the three of you have exactly one hour to gather any and all equipment that you will need and meet me at training ground 7. Unlike most senseis we'll be having my exam today rather than tomorrow, so I hope you're all prepared. 
Kishina said with a very ominous smirk. That smirk was something that Naruko and Mito had seen many times, and Naruto had seen it a few times on his mother and a few of his dragons, it meant hell had just been unleashed and they were in the crosshairs of it. Your time begins now, get going. Kishina said before flashing away leaving the three genin alone, seconds later they were gone. Chapter 6. A Test of Teamwork. After the hour time limit was up Kishina stood by the memorial stone of training ground 7, waiting for her genin to show up so they could get to work. Like most Jonin she had a test planned, however hers would be much more original and diverse than any of the other senseis who planned to test their students. Not a minute after the time had expired her three students had arrived in blurs, showing they did indeed have prior training, she seized them up to see if they brought anything else. Naruko had gotten her sword silver leaf a katana from her 10th birthday, and Mito clearly went and gotten her own three prong kunai her father had given her the same year. Enzo however seemed to not have gathered anything but, after years of fighting with her friend, she realized her son probably had the same habit of hiding his tricks. All right as I said back at the academy, this will be the test to see if you have what it takes to become full genin and enter the shinobi world. Kishina told them. What are we doing? Naruto asked. Kishina smiled and put her hands together in a familiar hand sign shadow clone jutsu. She said and three copies of herself appeared next to her. The first part of the test is this, these three clones possess roughly a third of my strength, your job is for each of you to dispel one. If you don't dispel a clone by lunch, then you'll be tied to the post and watch as I eat mine. She said smiling in a slightly evil kind of way. Naruko and Mito gulped as they knew even just a third of their mother's strength was enough to send them both flying usually, how were they going to each hit one? Naruto on the other hand frowned. So what else happens if we don't hit a clone? He asked knowing there was more. Ah yes, if any of you fail to dispel a clone you'll be sent back to the academy for another year. She said kindly. What? Naruko and Mito yelled, they didn't have time for the academy again, they had to get strong to find their brother. Sorry girls but that's the rules, now get ready. Kishina said becoming serious, seeing the change the girls and Naruto did the same. Ready? Begin. She said as the clones and the kids blurred off into the trees. Ah they grow up so fast. Kishina thought as she watched the girls go, she then grew sad as she looked down. Oh Naruto, I wish you could be here with them. She thought. Naruto meanwhile was laying in cover in the thick leaves of the tree, thinking something about this test didn't add up. No way was it possible for a fresh genin, even one of their caliber, to bring down a jonin. Unless she wants each of us to dispel a clone, she never said we had to fight it alone. He thought, a light bulb dinging in his head as he jumped through the trees. He ran for a few minutes using his senses to try and pick up on the girls, before long he stopped and looked down to see Naruko was laying in the bushes, watching a clone that just stood out in the open. Deciding to take a chance he jumped down and landed behind her. Naruko. He whispered, making her nearly jump out of the bush. Ami Tenzo do you want me to get busted, what are you even doing here go find your own clone. She whispered growling at him. That's the thing I don't think we are supposed to be able to do alone. Naruto whispered. Dot say what? Naruko was clearly confused, that was the test wasn't it? To dispel a clone. Think about it, we may be cut above the average genin, but we are still genin meaning not a lot of experience, sensei is a jonin and your mom, so you know how strong she is. He pointed out. Naruko frowned and thought about this for a second, he did have a point. Though that she thought about it was she really crazy enough to fight her mom one on one? So what do you suggest? She asked curiously. We find Mido and work as a team, each of us only has to dispel a clone, not fight it alone. We all team up and weaken the clone, then only one of us finishes it off. Naruto said. Naruko blinked dot that actually makes sense. She said surprised her or Mito didn't think of that. And I'm glad someone else figured it out. A monotone voice said behind them making them both nearly leap, Mito had snuck up on them. Damn it Mito. Naruko yelled this time, this alerted the clone who smirked and attacked them forcing them into the open. Okay no time for a plan just work on instinct. Naruto said as they jumped back, the clone rushed them and began. Never before had Naruto been so pushed to the limit, Kishina gave them no room for air, as she struck blow after blow, her feet seemed to glide over the ground as she kicked and punched, never did she stick to the same target, if anything she easily managed to strike all three of them, no matter what angle they came at. After roughly 10 minutes of fighting Naruto noticed something, the clone had yet to draw her sword or done any jutsus only stuck with tojutsu, and from the look of it, it was the tied fist style of the Uzumaki clan. But why only stick with tojutsu? He wondered briefly as they fought, soon it became increasingly clear they could not beat her in a straight fight, however, by then he had a plan. Naruko, Mito regroup. Naruto jumped back, and the girls followed a moment later. This is getting us nowhere, we don't have a chance in beating her in a straight fight. Mito admitted. Which is why I have a plan. Naruto said drawing them close. The clone frowned when the trio began to whisper their plan to each other, they blocked their mouths to prevent her from reading lips also. 
Clever, she thought. Just then Naruko gasped and nodded and the three pulled away. Okay, are we ready? Naruto asked. The girls nodded and without further ado, Naruto and Mita rushed forward and re-engaged the clone. The two attacked with new ferocity and determination, yet still they were unable to land a hit. But they know this so why would they? Kashina thought until the answer suddenly hit her, but by then it was too late. Water style. Gunshot. Naruko's voice called from the back as she finished gathering the chakra and fired a bullet, Naruto and Mito kept the clone still long enough and jumped away at the last moment as the water bullet hit the clone, dispelling it. Nice work Naruko. Naruto said smiling at her, she really had grown since she was a little girl. Ah thanks, man that took a chunk out of me. Naruko said with a slight groan, she still needed a decent chunk of chakra to even use that. Sadly no time to waste, we still have two more clones to fight and I doubt they will give us time to recover. Mito said, just then a second water bullet came flying out of the trees, forcing the three to jump away. You would be right about that sweetheart, best get the clocks ticking. Kashina's voice rang out through the trees, they sadly couldn't figure out where she was though. Let's get moving. Naruto said as the three jumped away. Kashina sat in a tree not far from where they left and watched them impressed, they already half figured out what the meaning of the test was and were working together, not to mention she was impressed with their planning skills, in order to come up with a plan. Those three are going to make quite a team she thought. The trio once again ran through the trees at high speed, trying to find where the next clone would be, after a minute Naruto looked towards the river. There, by the river. Naruto suddenly said, making them leap off from the trees and into the clearing to see the second clone. Well, glad to see you three found me, now let's see if you can beat me. The clone said as it blurred through a set of hand signs faster than they could even see. Water style. Water fang bullet jutsu. Kashina said, behind her the water rose up and fired like a drill making them scatter. Holy hell, that was a B-rank just to. Naruko cried out as they landed, looking back however they saw that their teacher was gone. Left, right, no above. Naruto thought as he looked up, Kashina was high above them having jumped and springboard on her own, and now was going through hand signs again. Wind style. Gale palm. She said launching a barrage of shuriken before shooting them forward with a compressed wind, the trio dodged again, and this time Mito ran forward to intercept their mom before she landed. Mito had started to see something of a pattern and engaged her mother at Tejutsu again to test something, this time when they fought she noticed the clone's moves were sluggish and different than the last. Hey, help me take her down with long-range Jutsu. Mito called, now it was her turn with a plan. Coming up. Naruto said flashing through a set of hand signs slower than Kashina but still fast. Higher style. Phoenix flower jutsu. Naruto said shooting off the fireballs. He was so glad his mother and Anko had shown him some fire jutsus during training. The clone managed to dodge and Mito pressed forward with her advantage. She fought more with their dad style, the cheetah style than tied fist. Slowly she made headway as Naruto and Naruko helped her by firing off more long-range jutsu. Finally she saw an opening just as the clone dodged yet another fireball. She threw one of her regular kunai and hit it as it was distracted, causing the clone to poof away. Yeah go Mito. Naruko cheered as her sister won, then she panted as the fatigue of using so many caught up to her. Take a breath, we need a moment to prepare reserves for the last clone. Mito said it was clear they were both tired. However before they could sit down a kunai was thrown from the bushes, forcing them to move out of the way, the last clone then came charging out sword drawn and ready to fight. Sorry kids, life doesn't always give you time to rest. Kashina said, she is ready to fight. However halfway she was forced to block with her sword as Naruto lunged forward with his own drawn. Enzo, you sure you want to fight me head to head? Kashina asked as they pushed against each other, for a kid she was surprised by his strength. Well, you can't be any less powerful than my mom or the dragons, and I've been fighting them for years. Naruto said. Take her butt Tenzo. Naruko yelled, Mito didn't say anything, but she was smiling somewhat, this boy was different than most and in some ways reminded her of her brother. Naruto forced Kashina back and skidded back to a safe distance, wasting no time. He bit his thumb and swiped it over his palm. The summoning jutsu Kashina thought shocked as Naruto slammed his hands to the ground. Summoning jutsu. He yelled creating a burst of smoke, when it cleared standing next to his was a bipedal silver dragon with light leather armor on, two katana hung on its belt. You're called Tenzo. The dragon Kokomo asked, all the dragons knew to refer to Naruto in his false name when they were around others. Need a hand with a sword fight Kokomo, up for it. Naruto asked, holding his sword up. The dragon said nothing, merely smirked and drew its swords. Without a word the two charged forward as one. Kashina was impressed as the battle began, already she was forced on the defensive as she blocked or ducked the sword strikes. She noticed Tenzo's style was more rigid and firm, demanding on hard forward strikes and powerful blows to knock an opponent down, while the dragon Kokomo was more like her, light on its feet and aiming for weak spots in the defense and exploiting them. 
for 10 minutes steel met steel and blows rang out, however Naruto knew he wasn't going to be able to keep this up for long. Just as his stance started to waver Kishina was forced to dodge a hail of shuriken and kunai from the side, glancing she saw the girls running a circle around them and throwing weapons to help their teammate. Looks like they figured it out. Kishina said as the battle quickly fell from her favor in a matter of minutes after Naruto struck the killing blow and made the clone dispel. The three panted as they took a minute to rest and smiled out at each other, they had done it. They stood and laughed when they heard clapping coming from behind them, turning they saw the original was right there. Well, congratulations, you three. You managed to successfully pass the first part of the exam. Kishina told them. Oh come on mom, we don't have the energy left to deal with more. Naruko whined a bit. Enough of that young lady, I did not raise a whiner. Kishina scolded her a little, making her wince and chuckled sheepishly. Now then for the second part of the exam, this one will not require a test of your strength, but a test of your mind. She said, confusing them. What do you mean, sensei? Naruto asked. Come on, surely the three of you would have noticed. She said, making them shake their heads. All right then, in that case I'm going to give the three of you one hour to figure out what I was trying to teach you by making you fight the clones. To be fair I'll give you a hint, there were three lessons involved. Come to the memorial stone when you have the answer. She said before she disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Oh man, now we are dead for sure. Naruko said it was no secret she was more of a girl who learned hands-on. We shouldn't give up so easily, mom wanted us to learn something, so we have to figure out what it is she wants us to learn. Mito said already thinking it over. But sis we didn't learn anything from those fights. Naruko said. Naruto had stayed silent the whole time the girls were arguing back and forth on what it was they had learned, he was thinking over the problem as well, and something struck him as odd. I think the first part is easy, teamwork. We couldn't have gotten as far as we did if we hadn't worked together, especially with how those clones fought. He thought as memories of the three of them went through his mind. The second one, well what about how the clones fought? Each of them only used one thing, the first was tojutsu, the second was ninjutsu, and the last one was kenjutsu. None of them ever did anything besides that even when we started fighting with other skill areas. Maybe the second one is to never grow stagnant and diversify your skills. He thought about looking over the battles in his mind. The third one however was still very much eluding him, as he couldn't figure out what third lesson they had learned, he was pulled out of his thoughts when he heard Naruko and Mito groan. Man, we haven't been this tired since we started training. Naruko said lightly panting as she laid on the grass. It indeed has been a while since we had to push ourselves this far. Mito admitted sitting to take a breather as well. Well, I guess that shouldn't be a surprise, it just means we have to get stronger. Naruko said. Suddenly it sparked in Naruto's head what the third lesson was. Hey, I think I have the answers. He said suddenly making them shoot up. You do, well go on say them. Naruko said. He smiled and told them. A half hour later Kashina was back sitting on the stone as she waited for her students to come and give them their answers. She hoped that the three of them were smart enough to figure it out. She was surprised when not a minute later the three suddenly ran up to the stone and smiled. Well, then, I take it you know the answers. Kashina said hopefully. The first answer is teamwork, we don't leave a man behind and we always look out for our squad. Naruko said, getting a nod from Kashina. The second is diversity, we should never grow stagnant in one area, we should always look for new ways to make ourselves better to protect others. Mito said, earning a third nod. Her eyes then turned to Tenzo hoping he had the last. The third is to never stop growing, even as we get stronger we can always improve, we should never stop, as long as we have things left to learn. He said. She smiled and laughed at that, they did it. You did it, that's correct. She said, making them cheer. Yes, we did it in full shinobi. Naruko said hugging Mito who was laughing and for the first time in a while acting happy like she did when she was a little girl. They had done it, now they could finally start to get stronger and find their brother. All right you three listen up. Kishina said with a serious tone and a smirk on her face. As of today Team 11 is fully formed, starting tomorrow we will begin your training and work to take missions. Take this to heart, you shinobi now, so I expect every one of you to act like it. She said to them, they nodded and smirked back, all three had looks of determination on their faces. For now then go home and get some rest, you earned it. She said, getting another cheer. Now they were ready, and tomorrow their new lives of adventure would begin. Chapter 7. Something dangerous this way comes. Or, not so much. It had been roughly three months since Team 11 was formed, and in that time the three fresh genin had seriously contemplated homicide multiple times, the reason, D-rank missions. Or as they like to call them mind-numbing boringness. If it wasn't for the fact that he did training and off missions with his mother, Naruto probably would have lost his mind. Fortunately he had other things to do, the last three months had also been used to find out the truth. 
with Mira and him and Anko sometimes being invited over for dinner or the night Naruto got a good look at his old family and thus far they had held true in missing him and wanting him back. He had asked a lot and watched them, finding that they left his old room the way it was, also spoke about him whenever they brought it up, he even caught his mother crying when she looked through an old baby book. Right now however he couldn't concentrate on that, he and his team had a mission, a rather dull mission they didn't want to do. Oh my god, why are we doing this crap? Naruko whined as she threw the shovel into the dirt, their current mission had been to weed a large field that would become farmland. Because it's the mission we have been given by Naruko. Mito told her calmly, although anyone who knew he could see she was starting to lose patience with these missions herself. No, I mean, why are we doing these chores? You and I were trained by mom and dad who are some of the strongest ninjas in the village. We are easily at level, and Tenzo is the same in his own right after what we saw. Naruko pointed out. In between the missions they had training sessions, how to work as a team, their skill, their technique, everything. Naruto hadn't held back after the first session and began to really shine in the areas he knew. You know Naruko has a point, we have done the required amount of missions. Sensei, why are we still doing these missions? Naruto asked calmer than either of the others. It may seem like these missions are pointless, however they serve a person well in a way to get their reputation out there and get attention. Kishina said from her spot on the large boulder off to the side. Oh yes I seriously doubt people would look at us because we pull weeds and walk dogs. Naruko said glaring a bit. Haven't you noticed that you have more missions than any other team, people actively request you three for missions. Kishina said smirking. The three pondered that, it did seem they had more missions than anyone else. However, Kishina said, catching their attention. Why oh you three are right, you're better than most, and you have the required amount of missions. So perhaps you are ready for more. She finished. You mean? Naruko said, obviously getting excited. Tomorrow, we will go and get our first C rank mission. Kishina said. Yes. Naruko said, jumping up, a huge smile on her hyperactive face. All right now get this done so we can go home, even though I'm getting bored from watching the three of you. Kishina said, the rest of the mission took a grand total of 10 minutes after that, and the instant they finished Naruko grabbed her mother and sister and bolted away towards the Hokage Tower to turn in the mission. Wow, it's amazing that I am related to her. He said out loud watching as they left. Well, you must have gotten your calm side from Minato and from training with us. A small slightly squeaky voice said, making him look down and smiled at what he saw. At his feet was a small silver dragon chick, his scales gleaming in the light. This was one of his partners, Kinta, the son of Infernus. He along with his other partner Taka, made his dragon team, even though they looked small, they could kick some serious ass when they needed to. I suppose you're right about that, still though it's an odd sight. Naruto said with a chuckle. Don't deny, you also have your moments around people. Kinta teased, making him chuckle sheepishly. I hate you at times you know that. Naruto said, looking away from the dragon. Well, in any case, is there anything you have to report? He asked, looking back. So far nothing, they seem to be keeping silent and building up their funds before they make a move to capture the tailed beasts. Kinta said, several months before his family returned to Konoha he and his mother had caught wind of a newly formed organization that if the rumors were true were after. Since they he had put a few dragons on the case of monitoring them to keep an eye on what they were up to. All right, that's good to hear. Naruto said with a sigh of relief, even if he wasn't willing to trust his family with who he was, he still didn't want to see Naruko and Mito hurt. He right now was playing the good brother from the shadows, and why the time came he would show that card, however that card would be kept in the deck for quite a while. His identity was slowly beginning to come out, and pretty soon he would be ready. Head back then, I have to head home and meet up with mom. He told the little dragon who simply nodded, then vanished in a poof of smoke. But that over and done with he smiled and shoved his hand in his pocket, leaving the field behind as he headed home. However he never noticed a pair of violet eyes watching him, watching him as if they knew who he was under his mask. The next day the team walked into the Hokage office with a bigger spring in their step than usual, Naruko especially seemed to be bouncing on the balls of her feet as she waited semi-patiently for Minato to give them a mission. You know I was half wondering when you would request a C rank. Said man told them in an almost sage-like voice. We aren't that predictable dad. Mito said actually seeming a bit miffed at that comment, she took a decent amount of pride being hard to read. I'm your dad, it's my job to be able to read you. He said calmly before going through a stack of missions for them. All right team 11, C rank mission. A young boy has been reported to have been kidnapped and the family is paying for his return. You will meet the client in the port city north of here. Once you have the required information, start your search. Good luck. Minato told them, dismissing them. Hi Hokage. They said, then left to go and pack what gear they needed. After leaving the two the group split off to their various homes to gather what they needed, even the cautious one Naruto made sure to pack more than was needed to make sure they didn't run out. 
However, his mind seemed to be elsewhere as he packed. Something you want to talk about. A voice said, making him turn, his mom was there in the doorway looking at him. See rank mission, first one and I'm kind of nervous. He admitted, he didn't know now if he was ready for something like this, here he was ready to go out on a mission of a higher difficulty, and he didn't know if he was good enough. Mira smiled and walked over to him, giving him a hug to help him settle his nerves. Sweetie, you have proved yourself again and again that you are ready. You trained your body to the ground and built it back up, you made your spirit burn brighter than any sun. You are ready for anything that the world can throw at you, some simple C-rank mission isn't going to be much of a problem for you when you set your mind to it. Not to mention you have people you can trust, you have a team who will fight by your side, should trouble come your way, she said reassuring him, she had seen him become such a strong man, she knew he was ready for what the world threw at him. Naruto took a breath as he listened to his mother, she was right. He had done everything in his power to be ready for what the world threw at him, now it was time to show the world he was ready to face it. Thanks mom. He said softly, hugging her back. All right, now you get going and be ready for whatever comes your way, mind your sensei and the girls. And promise to keep them and yourself safe. She told him in a tone that said he couldn't say no. Promise you there mom. Naruto said with a smile worthy of a fox. She smiled and left him then to his packing, after grabbing everything he needed and storing it in his bags and his storage scrolls he stood and left his room. He had one more person he had to talk to first. So your first big mission already, about damn time. Anko's voice said behind him as she slung her arm over his shoulder. After returning to the village and explaining her situation regarding her former sensei Anko had quickly run through the ranks of the village and already at three months was a special and a head interrogator for T&I division. Yeah, heading out here in a few, and I figured you would have killed me if I didn't say goodbye. He said a bit nervously, even after living with her for years, Anko still had a way to just scare the living crap out of him and everyone else she was around. Oh I would have done worse than Nero. She said with a smirk that made him shudder. Anyway go make sure to kick some ass for me and don't say you won't have a reason. There is always a reason you have to fight. Anko told him. Will do. He said smiling and heading for the door. And bring me back something cool dragon boy. She said smirking, it was a nickname she gave him after he started summoning a dragon. I'll think about it, snake girl. Naruto called over his shoulder as the door closed, Anko chuckled and simply headed back to her room in the house to continue what she was up to. 20 minutes later Naruto stood at the gates of the village waiting for his team to arrive, well he did he caught sight of another team and some old man heading his way. Ah Tenzo, good to see you. Kakashi said. Hey Kakashi, you and your team heading off on a mission. Naruto asked to see them. He had his team meet up with Team 7 once or twice during training, since they used the same field, and to be honest, Naruto wasn't impressed by them. First there was Sakura Hirano, a pink-haired banshee who had a fangirl streak a mile wide and flipped at anyone who insulted her precious Sasuke Cha. Next was the raven-haired boy himself, to Naruto Sasuke was too much an emo for his own taste, so obsessed with trying to kill his brother and gaining power he didn't even see the rest of the world around. Finally, the ever-emotionless Ai, Naruto hated him on the principle that Sai insulted his sisters whenever they were around. Yeah, a C-rank. Sasuke said with a whole lot of smugness in his voice, he hated Tenzo with a burning passion, since he never could beat him in a spar, despite him being an and the fact that Naruto had power in spades compared to him. Oh you too. Good to hear you're moving up in the world. Naruto replied making Sasuke growl having thought they were the only team to so far receive a C-rank mission. Now, now you two, no need to fight, we're all comrades, so we should treat each other with respect. Kakashi said, trying to defuse the tension. Plus we don't need to start something when all of us are about to leave on important missions, you never know what you will encounter out in the world, and it's best to be a peak condition. Kashina's voice said behind them as she and the girls walked up. Ah Kashina, so you and your team are going on a mission outside the village as well. Kakashi said, giving her his trademark eye smile. Yes, and while on the subject, shouldn't you and your own team be leaving about now anyway? Kashina told him calmly, she could see the faces of the team, and the Achiha looked ready to go, she didn't count the others since Pinky just followed her crush, and Sai never showed any emotion. I suppose you're right alright team we best get going. Kakashi said escorting them and the man they were ordered to protect out of the gate and soon out of sight. Ah I swear that man gives me a headache. Kashina said, from what Minato had told her Kakashi had gotten his team their mission hours ago. You really don't like him do you mom? Mito said, watching the other team leave. If he wasn't so much a pervert and actually showed up on time for things, I probably would have some more respect for him, but as it stands, no I don't. In fact if he weren't a member of your father's team I probably would have kicked his silver-haired ass ages ago. Kashina admitted. Well, getting off the topic of the annoyance squad, we have our own mission to complete don't we? 
Naruko said cheerfully, she was still super excited to finally get out of the village, she and Mito wanted to start seeing the world and seeing if maybe they could find any kind of leads on Naruto. You're right Naruko, alright everyone let's get moving. Kishina said. Ah sensei, hold on just a sec. Naruto stopped them. What is it Tenzo, we need to get moving. She said, well, here's the thing, we can either run all day and arrive at time probably late at night and have to rest before we start our mission, or we could take advantage of the fact I have a summon contract. Naruto said. Would your dragons be okay with you summoning them for something like this, as I recall dragons are proud and asking them to be transported might offend them. Kishina said clearly not shocked he had signed it, she figured Mira would let Tenzo sign it a few years ago or something like that. Well, some of them might take offense to being summoned and thus asking if we can ride them to Port City however I have a few friends among them that would probably give us a ride, so long as we gave them something in return, plus dragons have a deep protection of young, saying we are on a mission to save a kidnapped child would probably put us in a favorable light. Naruto explained to them. Alright, if you have some that are willing to help us then please summon them. Kishina said she had no doubt Tenzo could summon something big, the boy had just as much chakra as the girls without them accessing the Kaiubi, and that was quite an impressive feat in and of itself. Naruto smirked and bit his thumb, swiping it over his palm before flashing through the hand signs and placing his hands on the ground. Summoning Jutsu he said, a large cloud of smoke burst into existence, blinding the girls for a moment, when it cleared thanks to what they guessed was a gale palm from inside, they marveled at the beast in front of them. The dragon was easily as large as a house, its scales glittered a dark copper with large razor-sharp wings, pale moon-colored eyes gazed at the girls calmly. I hope there is a proper reason you have summoned me Tenzo. The dragon said all dragons knew the deal, until Naruto revealed his identity to the world they were to refer to him by the name he created to keep him hidden. I need to call in a favor to Zeru, I need you to fly me and my team to Port City north of here. We have a mission to rescue a kidnapped child, and we need to get there as fast as possible, you're the fastest copper dragon I know, so I'm asking will you help us? Naruto asked. The copper dragon seemed to mull over Naruto's words for a minute as he debated, but eventually he nodded his head and looked at the summoner on his back. Alright, I will allow you and your companions to ride me to this poor town, so you may do your work. However, do not make this a habit Tenzo, I am a swift dragon, not a horse. He said lowering himself so the others could climb on. This is literally the most baddest thing we've seen from you to date Tenzo. Naruko said smiling like a goof, being around him brought her more playful side back out. It is truly impressive Tenzo, I dare say dad's toads would have a hard time fighting your dragons. Nito said, taking a seat. Yeah they are pretty cool, plus they are great friends. Naruto said sticking to Tezeru's back with chakra as the large dragon took off and headed above the village before flying in the direction of Port City. The trip from there was relaxing for a shinobi mission, normal teams didn't have giant animal partners they could call up for a ride, and even though this was probably a one-time thing the team enjoyed it. Nito and Naruko passed the time by practicing their chakra control to try and make it even more stable. Naruto sat on Tezeru's neck and watched as the countryside rolled by below them, it was nice to be getting back out into the world and knowing fairly soon he would be able to help a family reunite with their child, that was something he was looking forward to the most. Denzo. Kishina's voice said behind him making him turn, she was looking serious and slightly grim. Can we talk for a moment? She asked him, he nodded and she sat by him. So what's on your mind? He asked her. Ah, something I don't feel like I can share with my daughters, something I feel like I can't even share with my husband or best friend. Kishina said. So why tell me? He asked, confused. Because out of all the people I can talk to, you know I can keep a secret. She admitted surprising him. All right, I can tell this is something big for you, so I promise whatever it is I will keep it a secret. He said. She nodded and took a deep breath. You already know about my family's quest to find our lost son Naruto, we've been searching for the better part of six years, and even now we haven't had any luck, the girls are obsessed with it, Minato is too in a way, and some days I feel like it's the only thing I have to get me out of bed. She admitted. You must really want him back. Naruto was glad to hear that in a way, it showed they still cared. We don't, which makes this question so important. You remind me so much of him, his kind and caring personality, his never give up attitude, all the things he was before I lost him. So I need you to answer something for me honestly. She said looking at him. Are you my lost son? She asked making his blood run cold, she had figured it out and now was openly asking for the truth, should he give it to her. Naruto took a breath to calm himself and looked at her. Sensei, I'm sorry but I'm not him. He told her he could see the pain in her eyes from his answer, she had so badly hoped she had found him, and he had told her a lie that she hadn't. It made him so guilty just to do it, but he had to, he wasn't ready for the truth to come out yet. Oh, okay, I'm sorry I got my hopes up for that. She said about to leave. But, I can tell you something. 
When mom and I were on a training trip we met this little blonde-haired kid who now that I think about it matches how you described Naruto. He said, making her whip around and look at him. You did? Where did you see him? She asked, her voice regaining the lost hope. I can't remember exactly, we were in a random forest at the time. However I can tell you what he told me, he said when we asked why he was out there that he was training to get stronger, so that once day he could come back to his family a stronger man, he said he knew they didn't see him now, but when he came back he would make sure they saw him, and when they did he would forgive them for the past. He said that was what he would do when he was good and ready. Ashina smiled and her eyes grew misty as she nodded. Thank you for telling me that Tenzo, hearing my baby is somewhere out there and getting stronger makes me happen. While I'm still hurt I pushed him to the point he feels he needs to be away, I'm just glad he will one day come to him, and hopefully then he will forgive us. Kishina admitted. Naruto nodded and smiled. Be welcome sensei. He said giving her a side hug, she accepted it and left after they finished to give him some privacy. She looked back at him for a moment when he was gazing forward and smiled, her eyes still watery. Right now your secret is safe, but I hope you know when you're ready to show us we'll be waiting for you to tell us the truth, my sweet baby Naruto. She thought as she gazed at his back before rejoining the girls. Chapter 8. Why We Fight. Several hours after setting out from Kanoha by Dragon Back the team found themselves landing on the outskirts of Port City, they did so, since it would be too much of a ruckus if they decided to land a dragon in the middle of the city. Thank you for the ride to Zeru, we very much appreciate you doing this for us. Kashina said, all four bowed to the dragon to show it the proper respect. Think nothing of it, simply my duty to a friend. Now I will leave for your mission. Tazeru said before dispelling himself in a puff of smoke can return to the dragon summon mountain. All tight, let's get going everyone, we need to meet with the clients so we can get the info we need. Kishina said. Right sensei. They said following after her as they headed down to the city below. Once inside they found it to be familiar in a way too, bustling and full of life, people talking and buying items and whatnot, it was a strange sense of peace that only those who came from a large village understood. So who exactly are we supposed to meet up with sensei? Naruko asked, deciding to be professional with them outside the village. The parents of the young boy who ran away, we are to meet them at their home to find a photo of the boy and a description of what he is like to have a better chance of finding him. Kishina said adopting a serious personality herself. Do we know why this kid was kidnapped or was it just by random chance? Naruto asked, that was a key piece they would need to deal with in case they needed to rescue him. From what it sounds like it was a random chance, the parents received a note from someone they didn't recognize and immediately sent to hire us. Kashina explained. The team lapsed into silence from there, mentally going over what they knew and what they would have to deal with on a mission like this, in Naruto's mind however something was off about this whole situation. The parents didn't even know about the kidnapping until after they got the note. That didn't sit well with him. Soon they arrived at an above average looking home, nice but not overly done. Going to the door Kashina knocked three times before waiting, a few moments later a young woman with blonde hair answered the door. Can I help you? The woman asked clearly on edge about strangers appearing at her door. Good evening ma'am, we're Shinobi from, you hired us to search for your kidnapped child. Kashina said, the woman's eyes were sweet wide from there. Oh yes, yes please come inside. She said opening the door for them, once inside she shut the door and led them to the living room where they found her husband waiting. I must confess we weren't expecting you until tomorrow, please forgive us for not setting anything out. The woman said as she sat. It's all right, if it's no trouble we would like to start an investigation as soon as possible. Kashina said. Yes, of course, I'm afraid other than being able to give you a photo of your son and a description we won't be much help, the note gave just a drop point for the money the kidnappers want us to pay. This time the man spoke and handed them a photo, Kashina took it, and all four of them looked, however what they saw made three of the four's breath hitch in their throats. The young boy in the photo was no older than seven or eight, he had spiky blonde hair and sea blue eyes, he was wearing an orange and white shirt and a pair of blue jeans. For Kishina, Naruko, and Mito all the little boy needed was deeper blue eyes and whisker marks, and he would be the spitting image of Naruto. His name is Kamina, he's the second oldest right behind his brother. As you can see by the photo his blonde hair makes him hard to miss in a crowd. The last time we saw him two days ago he was wearing that same outfit, so you should know what he looks like down to a point. The man said, it was clear he was just as distressed as his wife. May I ask a question Mrs. Naruto asked, bringing everyone out of their gaze. I hate to be one to ask but, how did he get kidnapped? Naruto asked, they needed to know even if it was a sore subject. The two parents looked down, shame and guilt plastered on their faces. As we said, Kamina is the second oldest. Recently we have been spending far more time with our youngest child as well as the oldest. We didn't realize it at the time, but we had been neglecting him. Two nights ago he ran away from home not being able to take the neglect. The woman said. 
That drove the point home for the three Kinoichi, Naruko looked about ready to snap, and Mito was no better, however their anger was quelled by the mother's next words. Please, we're begging you to bring our son back safe so we can apologize and make up for his mess. We know we messed up, but now we want a chance to undo things. The woman said. We'll get him back ma'am, no family deserves to be separated like this, and we'll make sure that you don't have to suffer through something like this. Kishina said standing, she saw where the girls had been going with their anger, and it would make them not go to explode on a client that was already as emotionally distressed as the two of them. Thank you. The father said let them leave. Once outside and away from the clients Naruko growled and punched a wall. How could anyone do that to a person? Naruko almost yelled as she vented her anger. Naruko, calm down. They made a mistake and now are trying to fix it. Just like you are trying to do with finding Naruto. Kishina said trying to get her to take a breath, it seemed like it worked a minute later when Naruko released a shaky breath and dropped her fist. Sorry sensei, I let emotions control my actions again. She said, her temper obviously cooled down. We best not dwell on the situation, we have a mission to complete and more importantly a little boy who is probably missing his family to find. Mito said in a rather cold stoic voice, Naruto had learned now that this was the way she hit her anger. You're right, we best get going. Kishina said straightening up, with that the team set off towards the largest district in the city, if ever a place to find some loose lips, it would be a market or any place with a bar. As they walked Naruto slipped in between the two girls and looked at them. Are the two of you going to be okay on this mission, I know this is kind of a personal sore spot for your family. He asked. Yeah well be okay Tenzo, it was just hard hearing about a situation like this coming up. Mito said, her voice had warmed somewhat and sadness showed in her eyes. All right, I can tell this is more than just simply because of the fact that the parents neglected him a little. Tell me what really has the two of you so upset about this whole situation? Naruto asked the therapist. The two were quiet for a while, not sure how to fully answer his question. On one hand they knew what really was bothering them, but they didn't know if they could admit it. Finally after five minutes it was Mito who spoke first. The little boy in the picture, the way he looked and that big happy smile on his face, had we not screwed up and pushed him away, that could have been Naruto with the rest of us. Seeing the photo drove home what we did to him all those years ago, and now it feels like we were being tested. Mito said. Tested? Naruto was confused by her words, sure the kid looked like him, but how was that a test? Yeah, like if we fail this mission, if we don't end up bringing Kamina back to his family. Then we will just show that we don't have the drive, desire and just courage to go out into the world to find Naruto. Naruko said, speaking next. And say you did find him, what would that say? Naruto asked. That we are ready, that no matter what we will find him and we will bring him home, and we will be able to repair our family and make up for everything we did. Mito said. The two didn't say anything after that, Naruto didn't need them to as it was just another point in his mind that they really did care for him. Now more than ever was he beginning to think it was getting close to revealing himself to them, they did care and wouldn't just abandon him. All right everyone, let's get the search underway. Kishina said, shaking him out of his thoughts, there would be time for that later, for now they had work. So what's the plan, sensei? He asked, looking at her. From here the four of us need to split up, each of us take a section and simply listen, from here on out also hide your weapons and headbands. For all we know whoever sent the ransom note knows the family will hire ninja, so we need to blend into the crowd. Kishina explained. The three nodded and immediately stowed their various weapons and ninja gear into three storage scrolls they had on hand, perks of having a seal master as a sensei, unlimited storage. Now remember, any piece of information can be important, so don't dismiss anything as random idiocy. Kishina said, once again they nodded before the four parted ways and began to walk. Naruto, being the one who looked older and wouldn't draw suspicion, headed up the district to where a few bars were and chose one at random. Walking inside, he sat down and ordered a sake bottle while he listened to the conversations around him. He was so glad his mother had taken him drinking during their travels to make sure he had a high tolerance to alcohol, he was proud to say he did. At first the conversations were nothing special, merely the usual drunken rambles and gossip you could expect from a bar, who slept with who, work politics, one or two semi-shady deals between fruit winders. However, halfway through his drink something reached his ear that piqued his attention. So, those two rich suckers drop off the money for their kid yet or not? Some random guy next to him asked the other in a low voice. Not yet, the boss is starting to get worried they called in some ninja from the leaf to rescue him, he's thinking we should send them a warning tonight as to why that's a bad idea. Maybe a finger or two. The other one sneered. Ah, yeah that I'll make them see the point, you heading back to the warehouse. The first asked. Not so loud moron, you want to get caught. The other hushed quickly glancing around to make sure no one heard, Naruto acted like he simply didn't hear a thing. 
After a moment, more on number two as Naruto appropriately named him stood and paid for his drink before leaving, doing the same he stood and left the bar, before beginning to tail him to see where he went. Fate was on his side as it seemed the moron had been drinking before he overheard the conversation, as such his reflexes were not what they could have been, and he didn't sense Naruto. After turning a corner Naruto quickly scaled a building when they entered a dock area, keeping his eyes firmly on his man he watched as he went to a particular warehouse with the words Gato Industry. On the side of it and enter. Well, this is both convenient and troublesome. Naruto thought as he channeled his inner Nara and his shoulders sagged. The big question up for debate now was if this character was involved or if they were just using a warehouse. I better get the others before I decide to go start something stupid. Naruto thought, but before he did a mischievous smirk appeared on his lips. Biting a thumb he swiped over his hand. Summoning Jutsu. He said and pressed his hands to the ground, a small puff of smoke appeared. What do you need, Naruto? Taka said he and Kinta appeared in the smoke. My team and I are on a mission to rescue a kidnapped child, my best guess is that they have the kid held in that warehouse. Naruto said pointing behind him to the building, the two little dragons growled at the mention of kidnapping. You want us to go in and bloaterch the sons of bitches. Taka said, clearly the more frontal of the two. No, although I may later, right now I just want the two of you to scout it out and report back with what you find, so me and my team can infiltrate the place and rescue the kid. Naruto said, trying to get him to take this seriously. Don't worry Naruto, we'll get everything you'll need. Kinta said smacking Taka in the back of the head when he grumbled. Yeah, yeah fine, but if one of them hurts the kid I'm hitting him in the ass. Taka said as they flew off. I know I should have told him not to, but I think Taka has the right idea there. He thought sweat dropping a bit, shaking his head out of the clouds he jumped away back towards the market to find the others. So, since Tenzo got us the layout I'm assuming you also have a plan. Kishina asked as they stood on the building not far from the warehouse. It had taken roughly 20 minutes for him and a few shadow clones to find the rest of his team, by the time they were caught up on the situation Taka and Kinta had returned with a report. As it turned out Kamina was not the only thing of interest in the building, crates full of illegal weapons and narcotics lined the walls, and all of them were marked with the same logo. Along with a layout of the building they found from the two dragons Kamina was only a bit bruised up and scared, however that would change soon. A rough idea would be a better term for it. Sensei, we know Kamina is held on the second floor, guard room is on ground level, and rotating guards shift on the third. Best idea would be for the two of us to deal with the guards, while the other two slip in and save. After we're done we gather up an info on where this stuff is going, why, and who is running everything. Naruto said. Hishina was impressed, Tenzo may have been a genius, but it was clear he had a mind for strategy and planning. Hell she figured give him some more time before the Chunin exam, and he would be able to pass without a sweat. A solid plan, Naruko you and I will deal with the guards on the upper platforms and deal with the guards. Nido and Tenzo, you two go and break into the cell and rescue Kamina. Once we have him out of harm's way we will plant explosives on the building, gather what we can before destroying it. Kishina explained. The trio nodded and grabbed their gear out of their storage scrolls. Once everything was back onto where they liked it, they hopped off the roof and ran silently to the warehouse, reaching the side they began running up it, thanks to the tree walking exercise that Kishina had taught them in the first two weeks, and soon stood on the roof. After getting a few panels loose they dropped into the dimly lit warehouse and went to work, Nido and Naruto hopped down to the second level and stuck to the shadows. Counting to ten mentally he watched as Kishina and Naruko dealt with the guards. Once they knew it was safe they hurried to the door, Nido stopped in front of it and took out a small kid and quickly picked the lock. Opening the door silently Naruto slipped in while Nido stayed out and guarded the door. Naruto growled at the sight of how they treated the little kid, his clothes were dirty and he looked like he hadn't had a decent meal in a day. Slowly he approached the boy who saw him and quickly backed away, eyes full of fear. Hey, it's okay you don't have to worry anymore. My name's Tenzo, I'm a ninja from the Leaf Village. Your parents hired me and my team to save you. Naruto said gently. My parents don't love me anymore. Kamina said sadly. That's not true in the slightest Kamina, your parents love and miss you with all their hearts. They just made a bad mistake and now want to fix it. That's why they got us to help them find you and rescue you. Naruto said. Really, they really did? Kamina asked, his voice full of hope. You bet they did, now come on. Let's get you out of here and back to them. He said taking out a kunai and slashing through the chains holding him to the ground. After a quick decision Naruto helped Kamina onto his back and carried him out of the cell. Everything all good out here? Naruto asked Mito as he stepped out and looked around. All quiet right now, Sensei and Naruko dropped by and said they were going to gather up everything that we can use against this guy and figure out why he has all this stuff. They said to take Kamina back to the roof we stared at and wait there for them to return. Mito said. Nodding, Naruto looked back at Kamina with a playful smirk. 
Hang on to something kid, I'm gonna teach you what it feels like to fly. Naruto said before jumping up the walls and to the roof, Mito closed behind him. Once outside he smiled as he hopped to the other building in one huge leap, Kamina laughing the whole time until they landed. That was so cool. Kamina cheered excitedly as he sat on the ground, Naruto smirked and nodded. Perks of being a kick-butt ninja. He said. Five minutes after they landed Kishina and Naruko returned to the spot as well, Naruko looked a little green behind the gills from her first kill, but otherwise all right. Did we get everything we needed? Nido asked, Kishina nodded and held up a dossier of everything the warehouse had and where it was going. For now, just sit back and enjoy the fireworks. Kishina said smirking, her inner pyrotechnic take hold as she detonated the explosive tags and with a resounding boom dropped the buildings on the thugs that had been left inside, effectively trapping them until the guards came looking for the explosions and found them. Well, all in a good day's work, now I believe we have a little boy to bring back home to his mom and dad. Kishina said, the others nodded with a smile and as one group jumped away into the thinning daylight. Naruto watched with a smile as Kamina was embraced by his mother and father, tears of joy clearly streaming down their face, relieved that they had their son back. Looking over he saw the rest of his team was doing their best to hide tears of happiness at the touching scene, he knew in their minds they were seeing a different reunion and that this was just making things all the better for them. You know how you said you were being tested by this mission, I think you passed. Naruto said giving them both much needed hugs to which they accepted and smiled. And now there is nothing stopping us from finding our brother. Naruko said happily, smiling. Except for the amount of time we can be out of the village. Nido pointed out, Naruko looked at her with a deadpan expression. You just had to go and ruin the moment didn't you? Naruko said. Naruko, Nido, Tenzo. Come over here we have to talk. Kishina called them as she looked over the file. Ten minutes later the three were scowling as they read over what it held. This is very bad. If even half of this is true then we can go ahead and kiss Team 7 goodbye, not to mention everyone else in the country to this nutjobs rule. Naruto said reading everything. Can we even do something about it, by law we are supposed to return to Konoha now that the mission is complete. Nido asked, looking at Kishina. Ah, sadly yes you are right in the fact that we have to go back. SHE said, then a sly look worthy of the fox she once carried appeared on her face. Unless of course we happen to have a fast and small flying creature on us, if we send a report ahead and a request, no one would fault us for taking action on an air rank reinforcement mission, provided we hurry and beat the small messenger before they get to and the... Kishina said smirking, five seconds later the trio of kids were mirroring that fox-like smirk. After summoning Taka and sending him home with the dossier and the mission update the group quickly hurried to the dock to find some kind of a boat that would be able to get them across the ocean in a day or two or at least get them close enough they could run the rest of the way. Soon they found one, boarded with everything packed and were speeding over the waves. All of them had looks of determination and anger in their eyes as they sped as fast as they could to stop a tyrant from killing their comrades. Chapter 9 making the first splash in a wave. In the outskirts of a small town on the island nation of the Land of Waves, three shadows walked up to a portside house and gazed at the door. You sure this is the address mom, that guy back there didn't look like he was the most knowledgeable about the place. Or completely in his right mind for that matter. A female voice asked. Well, only one way to find out. Another said as she knocked on the door, the inside suddenly became quiet as a grave, however being shinobi they knew that someone was most likely going to see who was outside and make sure that it wasn't an enemy, if they were smart. Who's out there? A voice asked from the other side of the door. Traveling wine salesman Sasuke, who do you think is out here you moron? Open the damn door before we decide to kick it in. Naruko said with a huff, she was already irritable with the fact they had to work with Duckbit, Pinky and the Mutt, and she was not in the mood for this. The door was suddenly thrown open, and Sasuke gazed at the three girls and one boy standing outside the door. What the hell are you doing here, this mission gets lost. He growled angrily. We're your backup you idiot, the ones who found out about what gate is really up to with this place and the closet team that could get here. Naruto said, rolling his eyes, shortly after they had reached the wave, a message had returned from the saying they were to provide an air rank level support mission for Team Kakashi, something that made them all sweat drop at with the amount of trouble the team clearly had gotten themselves in. We don't need you. Sasuke said again gazing warily at the black-haired boy, for the Ichiha something about Tenzo unnerved him. He felt like he was prey to him, and if he ever made the boy truly mad he would be made lunch, and that pissed him off to no end. Yeah we say otherwise. Nido said pushing past him and letting them inside, walking to the kitchen, they were greeted with the sight of Sakura eating rice at the table with a bridge building who they had found out from the mission report was named Tazuna and the other member of Team Kakashi Sai sitting off in a corner and drawing. Where's Kakashi? 
Kashina asked in an even tone, they hadn't gotten the full details only that the team had run into the Demon Brothers and then Zabuza Mamachi, who was defeated thanks in part to Sasuke and Sai helping Kakashi. He's upstairs resting after he passed out from chakra exhaustion when he overused his Sharingan during the fight with Zabuza. Sakura told her before resuming her talk with Tazuna. Kashina nodded and headed upstairs, a shiver passed through the two female Yuzumaki twins as they pitied Kakashi for what he was about to face, their mother had been very graphic about what she would do to him when they arrived. So you three are the backup, great the only one we can rely on is Sasuke. Sakura said, giving a dreamy look to said raven-haired boy. You know if we weren't on a mission right now Haruno I would seriously consider beating the piss out of you. Naruko growled and had to be restrained by her other two teammates to stop her. Calm down Naruko, we'll deal with them later. Naruto said. Oh yeah and how are you gonna do that? Sasuke said with a sneer, firmly believing none of them could even touch them. Naruto turned to him and smirked a very sadistic smirk that made them all shiver in fright, except for Naruko and Mido. Kakashi isn't up and moving around yet and probably won't be for a while, that means that us and Sensei will be in charge of your training, and believe me when I say it will not be fun. Naruto said. Sasuke simply scoffed and turned his head away, Sakura gushed a bit about the Ichiha for some reason, and Sai remained quiet, only seemed to be drawing faster now. Everyone's thoughts were interrupted when they heard the sound of a yell, a crash, and a very unmanly scream come from the next floor up. Seems mom has already begun Kakashi's half of the punishment, I imagine after she's done she will be down here to shove the three of your nose to the grindstone, till it's nothing but dust. Mido said simply as she sat down. Azuna and Tatsumi watched a group with a mix of confusion and slight humor, saying what you will about Shinobi, but at least they knew how to get a few laughs in during a tense situation. So you three new brats think you'll be any better than these three, personally you look even weaker than Pinky over there. Tazuna said, baiting them a bit to see how they reacted. The three looked over at him and smirked. Honestly sir that's not really saying much since Akura isn't really the strongest of people out there by any stretch of the imagination. Mido said, earning a yell and an attempt to punch Mido from said pink-haired girl, sadly that did not happen as she was flipped over Mido's shoulder onto the cold ground with a thud. Don't worry about anything Tazuna, we can handle whatever kind of trouble comes and keep you safe. Naruko finished, Tazuna smirked, he was beginning to like these little punks. Three hours later after Kashina had finished tripping Kakashi a new one, she had her team and Team 7 out in the forest to begin training. All right, because I know how lazy Kakashi is, and I made him tell me what you have learned so far and, I'm whole appalled at the lack of luster training we're going to be starting you out on the first chakra control exercise today, climbing trees. Kashina said, putting the trees behind her. What's the point in that, this is just a waste of time when we should be learning new jutsu. Sasuke said scoffing. Oh is that so Sasuke, tell me are you this team sensei at the moment, no. Then shut up before I decide to find a creative way to whip your ass into shape that may involve Tenzo's dragons attempting to eat you. She said her hair was beginning to go wild like it always did when she was pissed off. Sasuke tried to act unfazed, but for the most part was utterly scared. Now then as I was saying, allow me to demonstrate why this will help you. Kashina said, applying chakra to her foot she walked over to the tree and walked up it, much to the amazement of Team 7 and amusement of her own team. By applying a steady stream of chakra to your feet you can stick surfaces. She said landing and throwing them kunai. Get as far up the tree as you possibly can then mark the spot, try and beat your mark each time. She told them and made them get started then turned to her own team. Now since the three of you are well beyond these rookies we're going to be doing something a little more advanced. You all already know water walking, head to the water behind the house and spar for as long as you can standing on top, weapons and jutsu are allowed, but do not use any above sea rank. Kashina told them, the three nodded and headed to the ocean. Five minutes later the sounds of metal hitting metal were heard as the three sparred with each other, Naruko and Mido teaming up with Kunai to try and defeat Tenzo, who had his sword drawn. So, we know already that Zabuza is alive with an ally and recovering at this very moment. I think we need to take some time and make a plan to defeat him when he comes after Tazuna's head again. Naruto said, parrying their strikes with his sword. You're right, personally the smart thing would be for you to engage him head on while we support you with long range jutsu. Mido said ducking a swing. Me? How did you come to an idea like that? Naruto asked, pressing the advantage he had earned and kept coming at them with his sword. Well, think about it. Out of all of us you and mom are the only ones who can fight the best with a sword, if mom ends up engaging him with Kakashi, then we'll just help protect the bridge builder and take out Zabuza's partner. But, on the off chance he goes for someone else then you are the only one who can fight him on equal terms with sword play. Naruko said making a shadow clone and sending it after him. Normally I would say that's a good idea, the problem is that Zabuza has so much more training than me, it will be nearly impossible to match his level of skill with my own. Naruto pointed out. 
that's why the two of us are backing you up, that way we can keep him off balance. Naruko said. Playing the plan over in his mind, Naruto thought about what exactly he would be dealing with if this place came to light and they actually did need him to fight Zabuza. His mother had shown him the profiles of the various seven swordsmen, and truly the only one that unnerved him more than Zabuza was Kisum Hashigaki and his sword Samahada, if ever a beast it was that man. Still thought, with the right amount of luck and backup, he figured he could hold Zabuza for a time. Alright, only because I can't come up with anything better than this crazy plan we will do it. He said with a sigh as they continued to fight, he was already starting to feel drained from this exercise. Yes, he did have Yuzumaki level reserves, and his dragons gave him a boost as well, but they had been fighting already for 20 minutes straight. Taking a small break from the fight but staying on the water they watched as Team Kakashi could barely make any form of effort on the tree. Well, that wasn't true, in truth only Sasuke was failing the exercise over and over and didn't want to listen to either Sai, Sakura or Kashina and kept blowing them off. You know I don't know whether I should hate that mom has to put up with crap like that or be lucky she is handling it far better than either of us could ever do. Nito said watching the scene, they could tell by the way their mother was twitching that she was very close to strangling her best friend's son with her bare hands. She is definitely a better person than either you or me. Naruko said, chuckling. No, she's not, look. Naruto said making them look back, Kishina had finally snapped and was swinging the Achiha around by his ankles with her chakra chains, after he had insulted her badly, Sakura looked torn at yelling to defend her Sasuke and not making their sensei mad. Sai was just drawing without a care in the world. I take back everything I just said. Nito said, hanging her head in defeat, making the other two laugh. Come on, we best get back to training before she catches us and does that to us. Naruto said getting back in his stance, the other two copied him, and the clash resumed. Later in the evening Naruto had accompanied Titsumi as she went out into the village to pick up a few things to make dinner with, seeing the state of the village, the children begging on the streets, and the low stock of food made the two shinobi's blood boil in anger. And believe the greed of one man can actually do something this hellish. Naruko growled as she thought over how she would kill Gato. It's sad and pathetic truly, then again you travel enough you see it enough to realize that some people are just the lowest of the low. Naruto said back to her. Stopping outside a small store they waited outside as Tatsumi did her shopping and was ready to leave, as they stood there they noticed a few unsavory looking bandits smirking and glancing in their direction. So, what to make a bet fat ass and his merry band of morons over there come over and try to rob us? Naruto asked, watching them out of the corner of his eye. Oh please, my godmother may be the legendary sucker, but even I'm not stupid enough to take a bet as blatantly one-sided as that. Naruko said scoffing at the thought of trying. Naruto chuckled and kept an eye on them still, sure enough not five minutes later the large group walked over. All right, kiddies, we'll make this simple. Drop everything the two of you have and leave, otherwise we'll be forced to kill you boy and take you girl too. The leader expected them to comply and do as told. I'm sorry could you please repeat that, I'm afraid neither of us be ass. Naruto said earning a tick mark from the man. Listen you little punk, we're some of Gato's men, and that means we make the law in this town. Now hand over your stuff or die. He said drawing a sword, the others behind him reached for weapons as well. You seriously expect to fight us with that cheap toy? Naruto said insulted this guy would even try that, he wasn't a master swordsman by any stretch of the imagination, but he was at least good enough to see bandits trying to mug him with a sword disrespectful. Yeah you little snot, what are you gonna do about it? The man said arrogantly, five seconds later he was flat on the ground holding his stomach, his sword was in Naruto's hand as he inspected it. This is a nice sword. He muttered and grabbed a ceiling scroll to store it away, the other bandits having been shocked that their leader had been taken out by one punch shook off their stutter and charged to kill Naruto, only to be met by a fury of strikes from Naruko. Denzo, focus on the sword later, we have a lot more pressing issues to deal with like these clowns. Naruko said knocking one out while another she had locked in a chokehold with one arm. All right, all right Killjoy much you know. Naruto said, sealing the sword away and joining her in the fray, he didn't bother to draw his blade as he felt it would be wasted against these guys. Instead he brought them down with a deadly accurate punch in his dragon fist stance. The fight with the whole of the goon squad took a laughable two minutes with them working together, soon all the men were down and out on the ground while the two shinobi dusted themselves off from the little scuffle. Well, that was really disappointing, I was hoping to get something of a workout from that, but it felt more like a schoolyard brawl than a serious fight. Naruko said. Yeah I know what you mean, seriously this town is being held hostage by a four-foot midget and these guys. I'm not that impressed. If Gato probably didn't hire any missing wing, then the villagers could have probably taken this whole place back by now. Naruto said, returning to his spot leaning against the wall. A few minutes later Titsumi walked out and gasped when she saw the mess currently laying in the road. What happened out here? She asked looking at the two kids who were guarding her for an answer on that. 
Though nothing much, a couple of guys thought it would be a wise move to try and rob us, but we showed them that it was not in their best interest to try something like that on people who aren't scared of them. Naruko said, smirking a bit cocky. Don't get full of yourself Naruko, that was the first lesson Sensei taught us. Naruto told her, seeing that grin on her face. I don't see anything wrong with being a bit pleased with yourself when you did as good of a job as the two of us did. Naruko said taking a side and began to lead her back to the house. Well I don't disagree normally this time I have to, we best take this situation seriously still otherwise we could end up in more trouble than we bargained for. Naruto told her, giving her a serious glare. Oh relax Tenzo, what could possibly come after us? Naruko asked him, smiling hugely. Naruto let the subject drop off for the moment, but he couldn't quite shake the feeling of nervousness that had been building since they had ended the fight with a group of thugs back at the small market. He shook it off and sighed, focusing back on the road as they kept an eye out for more trouble in the form of bandits. Neither noticed a person in the white mask standing on top of the market they had just left, watching them like a hawk to learn everything they could about them and see if they were a threat. So you're sure of this, they did call in reinforcements. A gruff voice said, inside a darkened room laying on a large bed was the demon of the bloody mist himself, Zabuza Mamachi. After his close encounter with Kakashi of the Sharingan and subsequently being put in a false death state, he was still recovering with the help of his partner. Yes, Zabuza, the two of them fought on a much higher level than any of the genin you encountered in the woods, their looks were also different from the ones I can see. One of them is also a swordsman from what I can tell as he looked insulted when one of the bandits attempted to attack him with one. Haku said sitting next to her master mixing a new batch of medicine to help him heal. You're right about that, most adept swordsmen would find it a great insult to their skill to be attacked, Brat must have some training then from a decent swordsman if that's the case. Zabuza said, Haku raised the medicine to his lips and had him take it only for him to hack it up in a coughing fit. Ah what the hell Haku, this stuff tastes like liquefied training shorts and skunk piss. Zabuza said, trying to rid the taste from his mouth. I apologize Zabuza, the medicine will help you hell faster, but it won't taste the best. Haku said, making him take more. Anyway, back to the new brats, whoever their sensei is must be pretty strong to be taking a fresh batch of genin on a most likely air rank support mission. What did the two look like? Zabuza asked her. The first was a male about 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, black hair with blonde tips, a mix of amber and blue eyes, dressed in mostly black and red clothes with the symbol of a dragon on it. Haku said. Coupled with the fact the boy has had formal sword training and we may be looking at the rumored son of the great red dragon empress of Konoha Mirakiratori, that could prove a problem in the long run. And the other? Zabuza asked, thinking. Female, roughly 5'4", shoulder-length blonde hair tied in twin tails, blue eyes and three whisker marks on her cheek, wore a black and orange jumpsuit. Haku said. Now that one has to be one of the two princesses of Konoha the daughters of Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki. If one is here then I'll bet the final genin is her twin, and their sensei is possibly their mother. Zabuza said, cursing slightly. Is that bad? Haku asked, confused, Zabuza rarely seemed tense about hearing news like that. Kashina Yuzumaki is considered a legendary swordsman along with Mirakira Tori, the woman was known as Crimson Princesses during the Third Shinobi War. She defeated all the previous seven swordsmen of the mist and has a serious axe to grind against Kiri for playing a part in the destruction of Yuzushi Agakur. Zabuza said Haku knew the stories behind that historic battle, so she didn't need the details. If this woman was that good then they were in trouble. So as it stands we have some heavy opposition facing us if we want to get this job done, assuming Gato doesn't try to screw us over. This may not even be worth the amount he is paying us if we have to deal with this level of opponents. But, a job a job, guess we'll just have to see how things play out after I get healed. Zabuza said. Inner at Azuna's house was quiet that evening, most of Team 7 was exhausted from Kashina's training regimen for the day and were just glad to finally sit down. Team 11 seemed fine only because they had grown used to the intense workouts from the time they had team training and all the home training they received from their respected families. All right, Kakashi should be able to return to training you tomorrow, but. Kashina said halting the near cheers from Sakura. I told him to keep the same level of intensity as you dealt with today, we're fighting an air rank missing nin, so I expect all of Yauchu to put their best effort into getting stronger while we have the time to do it. Kashina said to them. Tenzo, Naruko you two will be in charge of guarding Tazuna tomorrow, while myself and Mito keep an eye on things here. Tenzo if you can. I would appreciate it if you could summon a water dragon to help give us some cover from the sea if they try anything. Kashina then said to her team. I'll do my best sensei and see if I can call in a favor or two. Naruto nodded. Inner soon finished afterwards and everyone retired to bed, knowing just as the day before things would be long tomorrow and the days to come until this mission was finished. Chapter 10. The Battle for the Bridge. 
Days passed as the two shinobi teams prepared for the inevitable confrontation with his mysterious helper, as well as, things had gone smoothly so far, with the only issues being builders abandoning the bridge, fearing the wrath of. It was evening once again a week after Team Eleven had first arrived, and the group was seated to dinner once again, throughout it the talk had been light and simple, as they discussed what they would do when it came down to fighting. However at the end of the meal one member of the table had finally had enough. Why do you even bother trying, no matter how hard you train, is just going to kill you anyway. Inari yelled slamming his hands on the table, he didn't see the point of all this. The shinobi stopped and looked at the boy, surprised by his outburst about them being killed. Did we have a news flash for you, Gato is an egotistical midget nothing truly scary. Naruko said, rolling her eyes. Oh yeah and what would you know, you shinobi don't even understand what he has done to this place, and yet you still think you can beat him. No one can beat a man like him. Inari argued. Naruko growled, getting upset by this now, how could this kid talk like he had given up and lost all hope that the midget could actually be beaten. She was about to snap at him when Tenzo calmly began to speak. And that matters why. Naruto said confusing Inari. You think just because he is surrounded by his bandits, just because he has all the money in the world, just because he has hurt others we will simply give up and let him continue. Inari we don't care if he has all that, we are still going to continue to fight and keep trying to stop him even if it kills us, because that is who we are. He said calmly before standing up and leaving, he needed some fresh air. On his way out he stopped and looked at Inari one final time. Aiza was the same type of man we are Inari, and do you think he would be sitting here giving up, or would he be out there with us fighting the good fight? Think about that next time you decide to cry over his death. He said before leaving and closing the door behind him. The room was silent after his departure, the shinobi were impressed by what he had to say, and Tazuna and Tsunami were grateful for the kind words to the man they had lost, and Inari looked shaken, everything Naruto had said was exactly how Kaiza would have acted, and here he was supposed to be the man of the house yet, he was crying and being a coward. He is right, you Inari. Kishina said, making the boy look at her. Giving up is not going to solve any problems for anyone, and it sure as hell isn't a way to honor the dead, as long as you have something worth fighting for you should fight for it. Kishina finished, the rest of the meal was silent. Naruto sighed as he stepped into the clearing he had found a few days back during training and began to practice his sword motions, he needed a way to vent without hurting someone or something, and this was just the best way. He didn't know why Inari's words had stung so hard or why he cared about them so much, maybe because he felt that it was on some level pathetic that the kid was just giving up when he still had his family, still had his grandfather who was trying to make a difference. He growled and began to add more power to the swings behind the sword and cut large gashes in the trees, Inari still had people who cared for him and he was just disrespecting them and he was disrespecting Kaiza for his sacrifice to try and keep the people's spirits up. Finally he let out a large yell as he cut a tree down the side and panted, his fury cooled for a moment, but he still needed to vent to make sure he got it all out. With a sigh he picked his sword up and made his way to another tree, the same process repeated over and over again as night began to fall. The next morning light shone through the canopy of trees as Haku walked slowly through the forest in search of a specific herb, one she would need to help make the medicine for Zabuza. As she came into a particular clearing she was surprised to find the trees were riddled with slash marks and large gashes, she had only seen damage like this when her master had been training, and even still nothing had ever been to the extent she was seeing before her. Slowly she made her way through the trees until she came across a felled tree and a young boy sleeping with his back laying against it for support, she was surprised to see it was the same boy she had seen days before during the scuffle at the market and seeing his headband confirmed him a shinobi. She debated on what to do, on the one hand she hated killing with a passion and actively tried to avoid it when she could, on the other hand, judging by the damage he had done to the surrounding forest, he would be a great threat to her master. Her mind made up she slowly reached a hand out to grab his neck, however she barely got within an inch of his body when a hand shot up and grabbed her own, making her gasp. Hard mismatched eyes stared into her own, making her feel intimidated, like she was cornered by a large predator and had to tread carefully lest she be eaten. You know it's very rude to sneak up on a person, especially when they are asleep. He said with a hard tone as he gazed at her. Forgive me sir, I just wish to wake you up and make sure you were okay. It gets cold out here and I didn't want you to get sick from sleeping out in the open. Haku said simply, a good lie if any. Naruto's eyes softened and he released his grip on the girl's arm. Sorry about that then, guessing being a shinobi for long enough will make you a bit paranoid. He said sheepishly and rubbed the back of his head, in all fairness, he probably should have asked who she was before he jumped to conclusions and threatened her. It's no trouble, I should have been more careful with you being a shinobi. Haku said with a smile before standing, Naruto copied her before stretching and relaxing his joints. So, what's a pretty girl like you doing out here in the middle of the woods? You don't seem like the type who goes hunting. 
Naruto asked looking her over. She was cute dressed up in a pink kimono, but she wasn't really his type. I'm out here picking herbs to make medicine, my friend is sick and I'm trying to help him recover. Haku said, showing him the basket. Oh, well in that case let me help out to make up for my mistake. Naruto offered, Haku smiled in appreciation and nodded and together the two hunted for the herb. I never got your name by the way. Naruto said as they looked. Oh sorry, my name is Haku. Haku said, smiling at him, which Naruto returned. Cool, call me Tenzo. He said still giving out his fake name, best to be sure then risk it. Soon the duo found the herbs Haku was looking for and began to pick them by the bundle and put them in the basket Haku had brought along. So Tenzo, you're a shinobi right? Your headband says you're from the Hidden Leaf and that's the only village I know that is close to this place. Haku asked him. Yeah I just graduated Jen in a few months back. It's a pretty cool life if you can deal with the danger and the requirements that come with it. Naruto said. Outwardly Haku nodded in understanding while inwardly he was slightly panicked at the revelation. The Jenin did all that damage, he truly must be a trained sword fighter if he can do that before he is even a. And Zabuza did say that he was the son of the Red Dragon Empress, so he must be skilled, I'll have to worry Zabuza about him before we deal with them and the bridge builder. He thought. Hey, Haku are you okay, you kind of spaced out there. Naruto said, bringing Haku out of his thoughts, nodding to the brunette. Sorry, just thinking about something unimportant. He told him before pondering something. May I ask you a question, Tenzo? Haku asked. Sure, Haku. Naruto nodded. Do you have someone precious to you that you wish to protect? She asked. Yeah I do actually, a lot of people in fact like my family and friends back home. Not to mention my team and my sensei here. Naruto nodded. That's good, I always believed that you are only truly strong when you have someone you wish to protect and make sure they will always be there. Haku said, finally the two finished picking herbs and stood ready to part ways. Well, it was very nice to meet you Haku, I hope that friend of yours gets better real soon. Naruto said, smiling at her one final time. It was nice to meet you as well Tenzo, I hope to see you again someday. Haku said, after that the two parted ways. Sooner than you think we will Haku, sooner than you think. Naruto thought solemnly as he left. After returning to the home and getting a very large, loud and long scolding from Kishina Naruto went to their given room and laid down to rest, the training the night before had left him drained so much to the point he even slept through to the next day. Mom, are you sure it's a good idea to leave Tenzo here by himself? Nito asked as they and Team 7 prepared to take Tazuna to the bridge, too many builders had left and he needed the extra help from them to get the bridge finally finished on time. It will be alright Nito, besides he still is recovering from the intense all-night training he did yesterday and needs to get his chakra back up. Kishina said she had found the site where he had been cutting trees and knew that Mira had taught him how to reinforce his blade with chakra to improve his strikes. If you're sure. Nito agreed to this, but she still had a bad feeling about leaving him behind. A chill had passed through everyone the evening before and it was not something that left them feeling warm. The group soon set out to the bridge, the plan was for Team 7 to keep a watch, while Team 11 and the two senseis helped out as much as they could with the bridge, seeing how they were the only ones who could use shadow clones to speed up the workload. When they arrived however the bridge was covered in a thick fog, which made all of them on edge, traveling into it, they soon found the bodies of wounded workers. What happened here? Tazuna demanded to see his men hurt and the shinobi stayed close to him as the fog seemed to thin out in front of him. Then the laugh came. Well, it seems you were right Haku, they did send reinforcements and what luck as well. Kishina Yuzumaki, the Crimson Princess. Zabuza said as he and the masked figure stepped out of the mist. Zabuza Mamachi, I see you live up to your title of the Demon of the Bloody Mist. Kishina said drawing her katana off her belt, the red and gold blade gleamed even within the dense mist. Zabuza didn't reply as he scanned through his opponents. Looks like the black-haired Brad isn't even here. Pity, and I wanted to see if he lived up to the rumors I've heard about him. Oh well, guess I'll just have to settle for the other brats. Zabuza said drawing his decapitating knife and holding it outright. Pick an opponent Haku and let's get this show on the road. He ordered as he rushed forward, Kishina and Kakashi ran to meet him. Making the choice for her, Nido and Naruko rushed forward with Sasuke right behind him as Sai and Sakura stayed to protect the bridge builder as the battle began. Meanwhile back at the house Tsunami was in the kitchen washing up from breakfast, it was odd not having the house full as it had been for the past week. She looked around and found she needed a hand so she turned towards the stairs. Inari, can you come help me with the dishes? She called out to him, he had gotten better since Naruto's speech and seemed more spirited now than he had been before making it feel like he was back to his old self. Humming mom. Imari called from upstairs, Tsunami smiled as she continued until she heard the sound of tearing and looked to see the wall in the living room being cut down, outside were two of Gato's top guards. You're coming with us lady, Gato wants you. Waraji said as they walked in, Tsunami screamed in fright. 
Inari quickly rushed downstairs when he heard his mother scream and came across the two samurai trying to drag her away, enraged he rushed forward to save her. Leave her alone. He yelled kicking one in the shin, the man growled and hopped on one foot before smacking Inari with the scabbard of his sword. Edo said we only needed one of the two, so I think we'll take the women and kill the little brat. Zori said drawing his sword. Don't you dare touch him, if you do I'll bit my tongue and kill myself. Tsunami yelled trying to get them to stop and buy time. Ah, go ahead. Zori said and raised his sword to cut Inura in half, Tsunami screamed as the sword came down, however it was stopped by of all things an apple hitting the man in the head dazing. You know, I'm not the type of person who hates people without a reason. Most of the time I only hate idiots who attack others and anyone who tries to harm a woman, you two dumbasses however, have just reached the top of my shit list for doing those two things at the same time. Naruto said leaning against the counter in only a pair of sweepants and munching on some fruity swipe. Eat a kid, maybe you live then. Waraji said, Zori was still dazed by the apple to the head. Wow, you don't really understand the purpose of a threat do you? Oh well, might as well get this over and done with. Naruto said, faster than either of two thugs could blink, Naruto moved forward and slammed his fist into Zori's gut, winding him and properly taking him out of the fight. You brat. Waraji yelled and slashed at him with his sword to cut him down, yet each time Naruto simply calmly moved out of the way and avoided the blow. Stand still. Waraji ordered as he kept trying. Why do people always say that, what reason do I have to stand still and let you cut me in half? Naruto asked, ducking under another swing. Baraji yelled and became reckless, allowing for Naruto to slam a palm to his face, knocking him back, taking advantage of the stuff he jumped up and kicked him in the face, knocking him cold. And that is how we do things. Naruto said, taking another bite of the fruit, only to get nearly tackled and hugged by Inari. You save me and mom. The kid said. Of course I did, what did you think I was going to stand around and let you two be killed while I ate breakfast? Hell no, I will never do something like that in my life, and you better believe it. Naruto said before walking over and tying up the two goons. What are you going to do? Tsunami asked him. I'm gonna get some info out of these two clowns to see what Gato is really up to, the two of you better get out of here before more people show up or something. Naruto said his voice became serious so they could tell it would be better to listen to him. The two nodded and quickly grabbed a few things. They knew it would be better to listen to the shinobi as they didn't really want to see how he would get the information he wanted out of the two. After the two of them left Naruto secured the bindings on the two goons before slapping them awake. Good morning boys, so what's been up to? Naruto asked simply, when the two didn't reply he smirked. As Tsunami and Inari left they could hear the sounds of screams coming from the house, but not screams of pain, more like screams of pure horror and disgust about something. Back at the bridge the battle was not going as well as hoped it would, Zabuza moved more than a match for Kakashi and Kishina to have to struggle with, the three teams were not doing much better, as Haku had them trapped in a dome of ice mirrors and continuously peppered them with frozen needles. It is no use trying to escape this, please simply give up, I do not wish to have to kill you. Haku said solemnly as she looked at the three wounded teenagers, Naruko and Mido were doing decently well, thanks to the fox inside them, but, Sasuke was proving to be more of a hindrance, since they were forced to protect him and his reckless nature. I'm an elite you commoner, only an Achiha can defeat me. Sasuke yelled and ran forward to attack again. Your blatant arrogance is truly starting to get on my nerves, you show no support for your comrades, and you disregard their well-being over fighting me. Haku was genuinely upset at that, it was something she had absolutely no tolerance for, and she showed that by sticking Sasuke full of needles again. We need a plan to deal with this. Mido whispered while Haku was distracted. I think I have one, her mirrors use chakra, and if she has to repair them it takes more. You distract her and I'll try and damage her mirrors with a Rasengan. Naruko said. Mido nodded and proceeded to try and escape again, an act that gained the attention of Haku he threw more needles that peppered Mido to the point it actually harmed her. You will not be leaving this place. Haku said to them, distracted. What to be beat, Rasengan. Naruko yelled, using the moment of distraction to slam her family into the mirror drilling and grinding the ice to dust. Unable to keep it up for long even with the high amount of chakra she had, she jumped back and looked at her handiwork, only to be shocked when the mirror still began to fix itself. A nice try, but I expected something like this. Goodbye to you, Thin. Haku set about to unleash another storm when everyone stopped, the wind started to whip past them at harsh speeds, and a mighty roar accompanied it that shattered the ice like it was nothing and tossed the four further back down the bridge. Meanwhile, over with three Kashina panting as she and Zabuza exchanged blow after blow with their swords, she hadn't realized just how out of practice she was until she had come face to face with Zabuza. Kakashi wasn't faring much better with the amount of chakra he was eating up by trying to use his Sharingan. You two are actually pretty decent, here I thought dealing with a bunch of kids would have made you lazy. 
Zabuza taunted as another exchange was met, Kashina growled and pushed him away before trying to cut him down where he stood. Don't ever insult my girls, they are far better than you could ever hope to be. She said her swing seemingly became more accurate and deadly, the more she strove to protect her students and daughters. Damn, even if it's been a few years since the last time she's been in a sword fight, the Crimson Princess hasn't lost her fangs over the years. I better finish this up quickly otherwise I may not be able to keep up forever, not to mention Kakashi isn't doing me any favors. Zabuza thought as he dodged another attack from the Spy Cat Ninja. Suddenly the three were forced to stop as the wind whipped around them and a roar moved over the land, Zabuza was forced to embed his sword in the ground to keep himself stable, and Kashina and Kakashi weren't doing much better. When the wind died down Zabuza saw the three brats as well as Haku were laying at the other end of the bridge, the wind having shattered the ice mirrors of Haku's jutsu. You say your brats are as good as me, then let's put that to the test. Zabuza said turning and rushing at the four wounded teens, fully intent to cut down the two girls. No. Kashina yelled and rushed after him to try and stop him but, even as she did she knew he would reach them first. Naruko and Mido saw the attack and tried to move out of the way, but they were far too injured and tired to get away from the attack. Too late. Zabuza yelled and swung his sword, Naruko and Mido closed their eyes and waited for the end. But, it never came. Rather the sound of metal screeching against metal was heard. Opening their eyes they saw Tenzo standing in front of them, his sword drawn parallel to his body, as he fully blocked the heavy swing of Zabuza's sword, shocking the man. His eyes were shadowed by his hair, and his form seemed to ripple as he gazed at the bandaged man with a fear-like fury. Then his form shattered like glass to reveal a new one, one of blonde hair, whisker marks and blue eyes, and five words were spoken that left the bridge in a stunned silence. Don't. Ever. Touch. My. Sisters. Chapter 11. Round 2 begins now. Silence hung over the bridge at the now revealed Naruto's declaration, everyone who understood what was happening could not believe what they had just heard or what they were currently seeing. As the silence grew thicker and the two swordsmen battled in a temporary contest of strength, several thoughts went through several people. No way, sensei Zan was right under our noses the whole time. And he's strong enough to hold off Zabuza. Kakashi mentally yelled, like the others he had searched high and low for the wayward Namikas, and now here he was standing before him in a duel of strength and swords against a feared Arank missing nin. So you finally decided to reveal the truth, welcome back Naruto. Kashina thought smiling and trying to hold back tears, she had thought the battle to try and win his heart back would take years yet, not even days after figuring it out he showed them. This could prove beneficial to Root, I must report this to Lord Danzo. Sai thought narrowing his eyes only a hair width of an inch. What, how can this blonde hold back Zabuza, and just who is he if he has been hiding himself under a hinge the whole time? Does he think he is better than me, an elite? Sasuke mentally seed as he tried to figure out how he was so powerful. Sakura and Azuna didn't understand who the new blonde was or why he was important, however in a certain pair of sisters their minds spun. Naruto. They mentally yelled with tears beginning to build, he had come back to them after all and thought he hadn't shown them who he was at first, he had been with them the whole time and finally came back. What the hell, you were hiding who you really were under a hinge. Just who the hell are you kid? Zabuza growled trying to overpower him but failed to do so, a feat that truly shocked him. Me? You can call me Naruto Uzumaki Kuratori. Naruto said, shoving Zabuza back and holding his sword up. You have got to be kidding me, he's the son of the fourth Hokage. And to top it off he has training from Kuratori to boot. Zabuza mentally raged, although some part of him wondered why he took the Dragon Empress last name rather than Namika's. Either way kid, you don't have a ghost chance in hell of beating me in a straight sword fight. Zabuza said, although inside he wasn't so sure. Naruto said nothing and rushed forward bringing his blade to the side and slashing across Zabuza's chest, nearly leaving a large cut if Zabuza hadn't brought his executioner's blade up like a shield at the last second. Okay, I take that back, this punk has had extensive training with that woman and her dragons. Add to the fact I am rusty and already low on juice from fighting Kakashi and Kashina, I'll have to give him everything I have he thought and charged again to meet the blonde. What followed was a sword fight of true professionals, metal rang against metal, sparks and blood flew, both fighters gave everything they had and were very much equally matched. A few of the outlooks half wondered why neither of the two were using any jutsu and it was something Kashina picked up on and answered. This isn't just a battle for them, it's a duel for honor as a swordsman. Kashina explained having been in several herself. Naruto jumped back and dodged a vertical slash from Zabuza, countering and attempting to cut him down the middle with a high strike. Sensing the movements Abusa jumped to the side before performing a three-slash combo to attempt to wound the blonde, sadly this was only met with Naruto using his own blade as a shield and the executioner's blade doing nothing more than sliding along the metal. The two jumped back fully ready to continue when Naruto remembered the reason he was here. 
as much as I would like to continue this fight Sabuza, I have a reason for being here, and it involves you and Haku over there and a question. Naruto said, catching the girl's scent. Tabuza tensed and instinctively moved closer to Haku, the girl was still knocked out thanks to the roar and would be down for another few minutes. And what would that be? Zabuza asked, tensing and preparing to defend himself. Did you or did you not send a pair of Gato Samurai guards to Tazuna's house to kidnap Tsunami and Inari? Naruto asked, shocking all the others on the bridge. Of course I didn't. I work with only my partners, and I sure as hell wouldn't use two pathetic amateurs like those two, so I would. That rat bastard. Zabuza yelled, putting the pieces together. Beto intended to betray you and hand you and your partners over to the Kiri Hunter and two days from now, he never had any intention to pay you what you agreed on. Naruto nodded. I'm gonna rip a little midget to pieces. Zabuza growled, already planning on what he intended to do to him. Zabuza, with Gato betraying you, you no longer have a reason to continue your mission. Allow Tazuna to live. Kashina said in a firm voice. I was going to anyway, I only kill my target if I know the money is going to come in afterwards. Zabuza said making everyone relax now that they were out of danger, however not a moment later an arrow shot from behind them and would have impaled Naruto had he not sensed it and caught it. I know you were nothing but a worthless hack, can't even kill a simple bridge builder. You're one pathetic demon Zabuza. The arrogant voice of Gato said behind Naruto. You know had you intended to pay me I might have actually completed this mission, now though I just intend to make your death slow and painful. Zabuza growled. Ha, ah, you're right. You're tired and weak so just give up now and make it easy on yourselves. Gato said to everyone on the bridge, he had brought an army of bandits and was cocky enough to believe he would actually win. Zabuza immediately grabbed his sword again and meant to run the midget through however, Naruto held up a hand to stop him. Save your strength for the real fight Zabuza, I'll deal with them. He said calmly and began to walk towards the group, making them laugh. You think you can stop us blondie, guess we'll just have to kill you first, then the rest of the guys before we take the women. Gato gloated, Naruto didn't respond, he simply kept walking forward. And suddenly became a blur of motion too fast for anything less than Jonin level vision to track, as he appeared behind the group of bandits with his sword extended to his right, from his shoulder to the tip silver light chakra glowed and hummed in the shape of a metallic silver dragon wing. Silver wing slash were his words as the chakra faded, when it was fully gone every single one of the 300 bandits fell over dead. All the genin who actually gave the damn Sasuke mentally growing angrier about a commoner having more power than him the jonin from the leaf were stunned, they had only seen that particular move come from one other person. Though different with it being silver rather than gold it was definitely Mira's move. Beto lost every ounce of confidence the moment his army fell in one move, he yelled and fell on his ass when Naruto suddenly appeared in front of him. Please, please just let me live. I swear I will leave this country alone and never return if you just spare my life. Gato begged to the blonde hoping for mercy, sadly it was not him he should have been begging to. Now Gato, we can't have anything like that interfering with our plans. An ethereal and somewhat demonic voice said from all around them, sending shivers up everyone's spine. A sudden chill hung in the air and the world seemed to darken somewhat. Gato suddenly started panting and scooting back, looking around frantically for the voice. Master, master please, I beg for your forgiveness. I didn't mean it. Gato begged, but it fell on deaf ears, as an unseen force lifted him off the ground, suddenly blood gushed out of his chest, as a demonic-looking hand appeared in a clutching his heart. I believe your usefulness runs its course. The voice said again as the person or what qualified as a person appeared behind him still clutching his heart. The man was a patchwork of different skin, all over his body were stitching lines, and varied colored skin ranging from red to green to white to everything in between, his clothes were little more than rags to stick with the undead theme he had. The worst part was his face, an oni mask covered most of it, but what they could see was nothing more than burnt and charred flesh. Okay just who the hell are you, I know those two ass clowns back at the house said that this moron worked from some mental case, but, seriously I was not expecting Frankenstein to show up. Naruto asked jumping back to get away from the man. The man regarded Naruto with the air of nothingness as his eyes drifted to the back of the group and a certain raven-haired boy with special eyes. I will make this simple, hand over the Achiha, and I will allow the rest of your group to live. I have no time to waste as my master is waiting for me so do as I say quickly. The man said. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he tensed his sword hand, he knew who he was talking about. So you work for Orochimaru, should have known that slinky bastard would try something like this. Naruto said making everyone else tense up, almost all the shinobi including the genin minus Sakura and Sasuke, knew who Orochimaru was and now understood what it was they were up against. Hold your tongue worm, trash such as you shall not sully his grand name. Now do as your better has commanded you to do. The man yelled, the next second he was back at the edge of the bridge, holding his now slightly broken mask, where he stood was a growling Mito who looked ready to murder. 
first his name is not Worm, second Orochimaru is already trash, and his name was sullied long ago, and third you aren't better than any of us. She told him. The man growled and got back up, anger burning in his eyes. How dare you, common filth such as yourself should never touch a king. The man said, clearly his ego was very overinflated and he had a massive superiority complex. Oh can it moron, let's just save the drama and get to the fighting. Naruko appeared next to her siblings with a kunai drawn. Ishina, Kakashi. You two stay out of this one, I think we need to do a bit of family bonding. Naruto said smirking, normally the two would have flat out refused, but they could see what the three intended to do and decided not to interfere. All right then, but if you get into trouble then we are pulling you out, understand. Kakashi told them and stepped back. We do, hang back and protect a bridge builder. Naruko said smirking, this was going to be fun. You think you can challenge me, I am Osir and I am afraid of myself. The now named Osir yelled before cackling madly, Naruto smirked and stepped forward, way too easy. You aren't afraid of yourself, this is. He said before flashing through a series of hand signs. Illusionary art. Youthful sunset of nightmares. He yelled. During his time back in Kanoha, while training with his team, he had stumbled across a rather disturbing sight involving another team and their sensei and a student performing a hug of some kind, this was his version of that same technique. Two people known as Rock Lee and Mido Guy suddenly burst into existence and began to run towards each other. Lee. I sensei. Lee. I sensei. Lee. The two met in the middle and began to hug each other, behind them, the backdrop of a setting sun and waves crashing against rocks on a cliff of some kind near the ocean, appeared something Naruto had seen and never understood how they did it however, while that had been terrifying when he saw it, he used the chance to beef it up. And beef us he did as neither of the two males had a stitch of clothing on them. This had several effects. Akashi immediately turned pale and ran to the edge of the bridge and began to throw up, thanking every divine power in existence that he had put his headband over his Sharingan. Ashina though royally disgusted fell over laughing at the sight of the absolutely genius move that her son had dreamed up. Sasuke had a look of horror as he tried in vain to rid his mind of the image, but, because his Sharingan was activated, he would never forget it. Sakura fainted dead away, and Sai had a look of utter horror on his face for the first time in his life, wanting so badly to burn his eyes at the unholy scene. Aruko and Nido instead of being freaked out, punched him in the back of the head for being evil, and broke his concentration. Never use that hellish technique again. They yelled at the same time, they had seen the real thing, and it freaked them out. This thought was on another level of horror. What, it's effective don't you think? Naruto asked, rubbing the back of his head and gesturing to their opponent. Osir was currently dry heaving on the ground behind him, he had no words to describe what he had just seen. He finally managed to stand and turn when a foot slammed into his face and threw him back. Okay, it's effective, but I'll never use it again. Nido said, smirking a bit. Osir got up again and immediately attacked her, but was blocked by Naruko, who deflected his punch and slammed him in the gut, before Naruto jumped over her and kicked him in the head again. The three began to attack how they had trained to do so, using each other to build on combos. Osir jumped back and flashed through his hand signs. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. He yelled blasting a huge ball of fire at them, Naruko jumped in front of the trio and flashed through her own hand signs. Water style. Water bullet. She said launching a barrage of bullets at the fireball and cancelling it out before it could reach them. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Naruto set off to the left, launching a barrage of weapons and accelerating them immensely with the wind, Osir was forced to dodge to the side where he came in contact with Mido, who began to engage him with Tejutsu. Mido pressed her advantage slamming a fist into her opponent's head before Afira left strike, she countered with her own, and it died on sending him to Naruto, who was ready to slash at his side with his sword. Iron Claw Naruto yelled leaving a good size cut along his side, making him fall back a bit. How are these worms able to hurt me? Osa roared in his mind as he was forced to jump back to avoid yet another swing from Naruto's sword and breathed heavily. Damn, he may not look it but he is faster than he normally should be. Plus something tells me he is hiding something with that patchwork of his. Mido said, pulling back with the other two right behind her. Yeah I agree, so far he has only used one which has me worried. Naruto said. I did not believe I would be forced to use my power against trash, but if I must fulfill my master's wishes, then so be it. Osir said, making another series of hand signs. Ninja art. Plague of the dead. Osir said, breathing out a rancid mist at them. Watch out. Naruto warned, the three jumped out of the way as the mist reached them and burned the ground around them. Okay, that was different. Naruko yelled, suddenly she yelped as she was yanked down to the ground, her lower half was completely wrapped in bandages, which connected to their opponent's wrist. Ninja art. Mummy raps. He growled and began to lie around, slamming her into a tree before back down again. If she had not reinforced her body with chakra, there was little doubt she would not survive the beating. 
Naruto growled furiously as he jumped and cut the wraps in midair, catching his sister before she could hit the ground and cut the rest of the bandages off her. Okay, now you made me mad. He said quickly flashing through more hand signs. Higher style. Phoenix flower jutsu. He yelled, launching a barrage of fast-paced fireballs that impacted hard against Osir, causing him to cry out and fly back. As they fought the others of their group watched on in awe, Sasuke however was even angrier because of how much power the other three teens wield, powered by right he should have to help kill his brother. After this he would demand they teach him so he could get stronger. You know, he may not have been trained by you or sensei early on in life, but Naruto has become quite the competent ninja in his own right. Kakashi admitted to Kishina, the two however were sad they couldn't have been a part of teaching him the skills he had today, but proud still of what he had become. He has indeed, I just wished I could have helped him more. I wish I could have been a part of his life. Kishina said sadly, that was her biggest regret not being able to be there for her son. As much as I hate to admit it, maybe it was for the best that Naruto went and left for a while. Kakashi said and Kishina sent him a look of death. Hear me out Kishina, if Naruto had stayed even if you and Sensei had paid attention to him, then he would have grown up in Naruko and Nido's shadow. You've seen how the village treats those two, they worship them just as much as they do the Achiha when they were still prominent. Something like that could have put a serious strain on the relationship with them and lead to them hating each other. Kakashi said calmly, and as much as she hated to admit it, Kishina knew he was right. The village cared so much for the girls it was unhealthy and might have led to that very scenario. With Naruto leaving and being with Mira from the looks of things, he was able to create his own identity without risking being overshadowed and seen as someone who could be better. Odds are this would and will save him a lot of grief when we get back to the village. Kakashi pointed out. I know, in a way you're right, still though it hurts not being able to teach him his first, to help him learn to throw kunai, to train him and just be there for him. Kishina said. Do you plan to tell Sensei when we get back? Kakashi asked her, wondering how Minato would react to the news of his son's reappearance. I don't think that is my place to tell, it will be up to him. Kishina told him and she meant it, if Naruto wanted to he could tell Minato or keep it a secret, it was his choice. Back with the fighters, Naruto began to pant lightly from the drawn out fight. Barrages of wind, fire and water had done decent damage and managed to negate most of whatever undead like jutsu their opponent had thrown at them. This is taking way too long, anymore, and we may need to start drawing out the fox's chakra. Nido said a little worried, though they had been training and harnessing the power of the Nine Tails they were still worried they would lose control and hurt Naruto. We need to end this fast. Naruko said in agreement, even though she was starting to feel the effects of the long battle despite the fact that she had insane amounts of stamina. Do you plan to keep talking all day long, no matter what? I believe it's time I end this battle. Osir said across from them he was shocked he would be forced to use that power, but he had to then so be it. He quickly ran through a long set of hand signs, and before the three could attack he finished. Ninja art. Rebirth of the pharaoh he yelled and his whole body was covered in bandages, then they began to expand and grow until he towered over them. The bandages soon began to snap and rip as the hulking figure began to emerge, towering above them with bandages wrapping its whole body, and a bizarre looking headdress and helmet of some kind serving as a face for the monster. Now you worms, prepare to meet your doom at the hands of a king. Chapter 12. Go big and go home. None of the three spoke as they looked up at the large hulking figure that now stood over them. A similar thought going through all of their heads. Time to call for help. They thought together. Hey mom, if you and Kakashi want to step in now and give us a hand, then I see no problem why. Naruko said sheepishly. Kishina chuckled and drew her sword. She figured the kids were going to ask for help eventually, but she waited until they actually ask instead of stepping in and protecting them like she wanted to. Don't worry, this fight isn't going to take long. She assured as she bit her thumb before flashing through the seals for a summoning. Summoning Jutsu. She declared and a large burst of smoke appeared, when it added she now rode on the back of a large white seagull armored with crimson red armor. Kishina. You better have a good reason for summoning me. The bird said in a stiff tone, all Kishina had to do was raise her eyebrow and point at the huge beast in front of them, and he understood. Dot, never mind, that's good enough. Dinner can wait. He said before flapping his wings and took off to engage the guy from the air. You three step back and rest, we can take it from here. Kakashi said, giving them his signature eye smile before he returned his gaze to the man and uncovered his Sharingan before running at him from the ground. Naruko, Nido, and Naruto jumped back to where the others were with the bridge builder. Sighing as the drain from using the multiple jutsus throughout the two fights, they just had they all slumped a bit. Well, that was fun. Naruto commented looking at the three. It seems this fight will be over soon if the rumors of Kishina Sensei's sword skills and aerial mastery with her summons are true. Sai commented slightly curious to see if that was true. Dust who the hell are you anyway? Sakura demanded ignoring Sai and looking at Naruto instead. Didn't you pay attention to a word I just said Pinky? 
Naruto said making Sakura bristle at the nickname. I'm their brother who has been gone for a few years. Naruto answered leaving out a few things that only should be discussed with his family. How did you get that strong, I demand you teach me. Sasuke said next clearly not liking that someone was stronger than him, the wind, fight all proved that much. Okay first off, never demand something from me. Second, no. Naruto said, narrowing his eyes, he honestly hated greedy people, and this kid was acting just like that, like he was entitled to the world. No, I'm an Ichiha, an elite and you will do as I order peasant. Sasuke yelled. A moment later he was laying on the ground out cold with twin fist marks embedded in his head. Don't yell at our brother you fucking duckus. Both Naruko and Mita roared at him. Naruto chuckled and turned his attention back to the fight, which honestly seems very one-sided as of this moment, Kakashi weave in and out of the slow but powerful blows of the giant and sent low-level lightning jutsu and fire jutsu at its legs to bring it down, but the real powerhouse was in the air. Wind style. Drilling air bullet. Kishina yelled, launching another barrage of high-speed wind blasts that dwarfed Naruto's own in both size and power. Kishina smirked and jumped off her partner and drew her sword, the blade of which began to hum with chakra. Uzumaki blade technique. Maelstrom slash. She yelled as the wind picked up and began to whip around the blade like a funnel, she slashed and cut off Score's left arm from the shoulder, making him howl in pain. How dare you harm me women, your power should be nothing next to mine. He yelled at her as she landed back on her partner. Wasn't that hard, you're about as powerful as my shoe. She mocked seeing how weak he was, as she circled she noticed something on his back and smirked her old mischievous tomboy smile. So that's how he has all this power, no way would that snake let one of his subordinates have anything even close to this without some kind of catch. Kishina thought as she caught sight of a seal that just from the look of it seemed to be feeding this guy chakra. Bakashi, I got a plan. Kishina yelled, the seagull swooped down and picked him up as they took to the air to talk in private. What do you have in mind Kishina? Kakashi asked, he early saw her current smile, and when he did doom for those that were her target usually followed. This guy isn't that much of a threat, he isn't even alive. Arachimaru just rigged up some cadaver, stuck a seal on its back and probably some prisoner, and is using that to power him. Kishina explained while at the same time revealing what they needed to do to end this. Is it really that easy? Kakashi asked, surprised. Yep, just need to give me two minutes and a well-placed Chidori when I say so. Kishina said. Bakashi nodded and hopped off when they were low again, resuming his word of distracting the giant while Kishina got to work on a seal. Higher style. Phoenix flower jutsu. Kakashi said as he fired off a round of fireballs and burned the wraps on the mummy's feet. Ah, you will pay for that. Osir yelled, trying to swat him. I don't really think so. Kakashi said as he stuck the giant's hand with explosive tags and destroyed nearly all of it. Bakashi, now. Kishina yelled, hopping off her summon and landed on the giant's back with her brush, faster than most could even process her speed, drew a seal over the old one, and pumped chakra into it. Uzumaki sealing art. Power backlash. She said as the seal glowed and forced the previous one to work in reverse, now it sucked the chakra right out of the hulking male's body, leaving him stiff as a board. Dodori Kakashi yelled, shoving his signature right through the monster's heart and making it shatter into debris. The two jumped away and watched in mild amusement as the once powerful and hulking mass turned to dust in front of him. That. Was. Awesome. Naruko yelled behind them reminding them that they were still there. Well, glad you enjoyed the show. Kishina said, smiling and chuckling at her daughter's enthusiasm. I best be returning Kishina, call on my aid again if the need requires it. The seagull said. Thank you for your help Shago. Kishina said bowing to her partner before he disappeared back to his summoning realm. That was a rather impressive mom. Nito said as the group of six kids and one bridge builder walked up to them. Of course it was, I don't do anything less. Kishina said semi-arrogantly. About that time they heard a noise from the end of the bridge, turning they saw the town had arrived armed and expecting to have to help fight Gato and his men, what they weren't expecting was the bridge to look worse for wear and a ton of dead bodies including Gato. Azuna smirked as he looked over at the townsfolk and yelled the one thing they had hoped to hear for so long. Gato is dead, we're free. He yelled happily as the whole crowd burst into cheers of excitement. Well, looks like the hard part of this mission is over. Kakashi said, chuckling as everyone gave him an odd look. Now, let's celebrate. Tazuna yelled with the town cheering in agreement. It was evening now with the town all in a festive mood, lights were hung, songs filled the air, food raided from Gato's mansion was enjoyed, and the town had hope for the first time in a long time. Back at Tazuna's house however, four people didn't join the festivities as they had family issues they had to discuss. Naruto looked a bit sheepish under the glare of his two sisters and the half-hearted glare from his mother. Why didn't you tell us it was you when you came back? Naruko, upset at their brother who they had searched for, was right in front of them the whole time. Naruto knowing lying would get him a beating decided to tell the truth. 
honestly, because I was nervous, even though I knew you were trying to find me and rekindle our family, I was scared that it was all a big hoax or something. I wanted to make sure that it was the truth before I actually decided to show myself. He said. The girls hung their heads a bit as even though they saw the logic, they were sad and their own brother had to do that with them. Why did you leave in the first place? Nito asked, it was the big question that had plagued them for years. Ah, at first it was because I thought I wasn't strong enough to be worth your time, that I was weak and didn't belong in the family. Naruto said, making them feel very guilty. But, after I started training with mom I realized it wasn't that, I realized it was because I wanted to get stronger, so I could help you and show you I was able to take anything you threw my way, and you didn't need to be nervous around me with the fox sealed in you. He said. Sweetie, I am so sorry we made you feel like that. Kashina said hugging him, she wanted badly to make up for what she did to him, the girls quickly joined the hug feeling the same thing. It's okay, I decided not to dwell on the past and just let it go, you showed you really did care about me, so you already made up for it. He said smiling, making them feel a bit more happy. You know, when we get back to the village dad is going to want to know all about this and talk with you right. Nito said. Yeah I know, and I plan to talk to him, no sense leaving him out of the family secret. Naruto said, chuckling. Speaking of family, I plan to have a long talk with Mira about all this. She could have at least told me my son was with her instead of keeping me in the dark. Kashina said, slightly irritated, as far as she could see her best friend practically kidnap Naruto. Mom, please don't be too mad at her, she helped make me how I am today and raised me just as good as you would have, plus she wanted to wait until I was ready to tell you, since it was my secret. Naruto explained hoping to quell his sensei's anger. Ashina deflated and nodded, she couldn't deny her son had grown up into quite the good man under Mira's guide, and she would give her friend a break for that. Suddenly, from behind them the door slid open, and Kakashi poked his head in. Sorry to interrupt the family moment but, Inari is hoping Tenzo or Naruto was going to join in the festival, and everyone else wants you four to be there, as well as the guest of honor. We leave tomorrow since it looks like the bridge will be finished then, so we might as well enjoy the night of festivities. Kakashi said. We'll be out in a few minutes Kakashi, we're just finishing up. Kashina told him to break the hug with her children before standing, the copy ninja nodded and left them to finish up. Alright, I think we should finish up this conversation when we get back to the leaf and meet up with your father. He is gonna want to hear about this as well. Kashina said, making the three nod. Now come on, let's relax and enjoy the festival. Kashina cheered and bolted off. Mom is such a kid at times. Naruko said, chuckling as they walked after her. And I hope it never changes. Nita replied. The next morning after everyone had packed up their belongings, the group of leaf ninjas stood in front of the large crowd of wave citizens that had come to see them off. We really appreciate all that you have done for this place, you gave us hope when we didn't have any. Tazuna said smiling, for once in his life not drunk. It was no trouble at all, just doing your job. Kakashi told them. You sure you can't stick around a little while longer? Tsunami asked them hoping they could. We can't, we have to return home now that the mission is complete. Kashina answered sadly. The Nari who was standing by his mother looked about ready to cry, seeing them have to leave was hard for him. Seeing this, Naruto smiled and ruffled the kid's hair. Take care of yourself, squirt, be the man that Kaiza would want you to be now. And know if you ever need us, we'll come running. And kid, no more crying when you're sad. He said cheering him up, Inari rubbed the tears out of his eyes and nodded. Don't worry Naruto, I won't cry anymore unless they are tears of joy. Inari promised him, making Naruto nodded. But that the group of ninja turned and waved goodbye as they walked off, Tazuna chuckled as he watched them go over the now completed bridge. You know, I think the name we gave the bridge suits it. He said to himself, above him written on the stone was the bridge name, the Great Bridge of Heroes. Three days later, having returned from their mission in Wave Country, the two teams had returned to Konoha and now stood in front of the Hokage, who seemed like he was trying to keep his calm composure and not burst into tears of joy at seeing his son. And that about sums up everything that happened Sensei. Kakashi finished with his report, explaining the events that happened in the Wave Country and the actions they had taken to save it. Well, certainly can't call that a C-rank mission, more along the lines of an A-rank mission borderline S with the zombie man you told me about. In which case, Team 7 will be paid for an A-rank mission, and Team 11 will be paid for a C-rank mission and A-rank backup mission. Minato said filling out the forms needed. Team 7 you're dismissed. Team 11, if you could stick around. Minato said, Kakashi nodded and herded his team out seeing where this was going, and it wasn't for them. The moment Team 7 was gone Minato stood and rushed over, hugging his son and daughters. I'm so glad you're all safe, especially Naruto. I'm so, so sorry for what I did to you all those years ago. Minato said he wanted so badly to make it up to his son, and now he would have the chance. Forget about it dad, it's over and done with, and I already forgave you. Naruto said, chuckling. 
Well, be that as it may, I still am making it up to you any way I can. He said firmly and not going to back out of that. All right, dad, tomorrow we can spend some time together. Naruto said, chuckling. Hey, leave me some time to see my son. A voice said appearing in the window was Mira with a smile on her face. The moment she appeared Minato went wide-eyed and whipped his head between her and Naruto so fast he nearly got whiplash. He then proceeded to yell in despair. How could I have not figured it out? He yelled, it had been right in front of him and he was too tired and an idiot to figure it out. Figure what out? Kashina asked her friend to look at her husband. Oh, just the fact that about four hours after Naruto ran away Minato let me legally adopt him. Mira said smirking, the room became icy cold as Minato stuttered and looked at his wife apologetically, however she looked like the fox she once carried and was ready to kill him. You let your son be adopted three hours before we even figured it out, then when we did, couldn't put two and two together. Minato. She roared and was on his ass so fast it wasn't even funny, not even the Anbu stationed in the room to protect him were stupid enough to help him with the current beating he was receiving. When Kashina finally calmed down Minato was beaten black and blue and smoke rose from the bruise on his head. Mira, regarding Naruto being adopted I hope you would Kashina started, but Mira cut her off. Wow, wow Kashina holds up. Naruto wasn't adopted by me, my son's name is Tenzo. She said smirking, Kashina was flooded with joy as she realized, thanks to an epic loophole Naruto was still her son and from the look he was giving them still going to be a part of their family. Hooray for loopholes. Naruto, Nido, and Norko cheered when they realized they were still family even legally. In that case thank you for looking out for my son. Kashina said hugging her friend, Mira smiled and shrugged it off before leaving so they could go. Well, I hope that wraps everything up, Naruto again I'm sorry and I will make it up to you. Minato said slightly recovering, but he was gonna need Sanadi to help heal a good amount of those bruises. Team 11, you are free to go, but I need to speak with Naruto privately quickly. Minato said growing serious, the girls were shocked but nodded and left the two blondes to talk. Son, I know I have no right to ask you this, but I need a favor regarding your sisters. Minato said, surprising Naruto. Sure dad, what's up? Naruto asked, this had to be important, Minato returned to his seat and winced a bit before speaking. As you no doubt are aware, the halves of the nine-tailed fox are sealed in Naruko and Mido, because of this, I am worried about their safety regarding a certain individual. Minato said and told him the tale about the night the girls had the fox sealed into them and the man who almost destroyed their family. So you want me and the dragons to keep safe? Naruto asked, masking the harsh rage he felt at the man who nearly killed his parents. Yes, the dragons I believe could keep the nine tails suppressed, should they ever try to break free, Mira did it a few times for your mother and for Mido when she held the beast. Minato nodded, he could feel his son's rage, and he honestly didn't blame him for feeling like he did. Dad, you don't even need to worry about that. As far as I am concerned if this guy comes even close to my sisters, he'll be dinner for Infernus and the dragon so fast his head will spin. Naruto told him to put some of his father's fears to rest. Thank you, you have no idea how much relief that brings me knowing my boy is a protector. Minato said smiling, in a way he saw himself in Naruto when he was younger. You know, now that I think about it, I think it is long past due for you to learn the family jutsu. So I think starting tomorrow we are gonna get you started on the Rasengan. Minato said smiling firmly, his son deserved to learn his bloodline, and this was as good a start as any. I won't let you down dad. He said, Minato smiled and nodded letting him go, Naruto gave him one last smile before jumping out the window, back in his Tenzo disguise, as he didn't want the village to find out quite yet. Minato chuckled and watched his son go, for a long time he dreamed of having his son back, so he could make it up to him, and now here he was, a strong man ready to take on whatever life threw out him with a vengeance. World, you better watch out, cause my son is gonna rock you to your very core. Minato thought happily before returning to his dreaded paperwork and thinking about the coming days of bonding with his boy. Chapter 13. A day of training and stupidity. So, let me make sure I have everything in order and I didn't miss anything. Naruto paused to block a half-ass strike from his father. They made a deal with the fox. He continued. Two weeks after the revelation of Naruto being Tenzo and revealing himself to his family things had changed in the young blonde's life, his father and mother had been spending every ounce of time they could with him to make up for all the years they had missed and work to fix the gap they had caused between them. Despite having let go of his feelings for the past Naruto was a bit nervous to allow it to happen at first, just in case this would end with him getting burned and cast out again, however they showed time and time again, they wanted to fix things and change. Currently they were in the middle of another heated training session, he and his father sparred as often as they could, so Minato could get an accurate reading on his son's skills and help him improve, he had also begun working on mastering the Rasengan. However, that day's training session focused more on them talking than fighting. 
Yes they did, the Kayabi made them go through a series of tests to earn its respect and make it so the fox would no longer mess with their chakra control and would foremost start to lend them its chakra more regularly. Minato explained. Right, I got that part, so having passed a test and getting the chakra you, Jiraiya, mom and a few other trusted friends, set out to help them gain control of the chakra and allow them to use the fox cloak. However, you have hit a roadblock, while well, Mido and Naruko have managed to make it to three tails and stay in control they can only last about 30 minutes at a time, and if they go higher, then they lose control completely, and you haven't figured out a way to prevent this. Naruto continued. Correct, we're unsure why exactly they can't push past this block, since they both have an equal cut of the fox's chakra. Kashina admitted they were telling him this, as well as telling Mira because they hoped perhaps they and the dragons could have an idea for something they missed. Um, honestly I can't tell you exactly, anything else you can give me that might give me more of a hint to go on. Naruto asked stopping so he could think. Well there is one odd thing we noticed, it seems like Mido has an easier time controlling her cloak and fox chakra than Naruko does. Minato said hoping that could help, but honestly he was stumped about this which was a sad statement since he made the seal for them in the first place. Wait really, hold on when you said you gave them both an equal share of the chakra, did you divide it right down the middle or? Naruto asked, and just as he thought Minato shook his head. No, the only way for the seal to work properly is for the yin and the yang chakra to be separate from each other. Minato said, right then it clicked in his head, and he groaned. You figured it out too, without the other portion of the chakra the girls are dealing with raw and unstable chakra, with no good and evil to keep things balanced. In a sense unless either one of them has everything or you can tweak the seal, then they are out of luck on the cloaks. Naruto said, making both his parents curse. Damn, I can't make any changes to the seal at this point, since it's so set in making changes that could damage the seal itself and risk the fox getting loose, guess I screwed that up monumentally. Minato said, sighing. Hey you couldn't have known things would get to this point back then, you were in the middle of a battle to protect the village and save me. Kashina said, calming him down. While they talked, Naruto got lost in thought going over their current situation. The seal can't be altered at this point because of the ink being dry, and dad can't link the two seals together to create a power exchange, since that could overload the matrix and cause the whole thing to collapse. Damn this is tricky, be easier if the two could just put the energy together in one body or some. He thought when suddenly an idea smacked him in the head. Go get everyone you have had help work on this and meet at the training ground, I have an idea that may fix this. Or cause a huge explosion. Either way I'll meet you there with the girls. Naruto said bolting out of the training grounds before they could retort. Should we be worried about that? Minato asked honestly, trying to process what Naruto had just said. Well he is our son who was raised by Mira woman of unlimited patience and control over her emotions. So yeah we should be worried. Kishina admitted. Meanwhile in the center of the village Mido and Naruko were currently sitting at their favorite place to grab a bite to eat after training, Ichiraku Raymond. A known fact about Uzumaki in general was that Raymond was considered food of the gods by them, so the girls tended to eat it whenever they got the chance, while they ate they talked mostly about their brother and their training. I still can't believe how strong Tenzo is, we have training from Pervy Sage, Mom, Dad, and Kakashi, yet it's a rarity we ever land a hit on him. Naruko said a bit downtrodden, she figured she could at least beat her brother in a spare, since she always lost to her sister. True but, Tenzo did have miss. Mira and the dragon summons to train him and father and Jiraiya have always regarded them as one of the stronger summons in the world, I imagine they would have a much higher standing of what they expect from a summoner. Mido said calmly as she ate her bowl. And let me tell you that was some of the most grueling training I ever endured. A voice said behind them making them yell and jump straight up from fright, when they turned they saw Naruto hunched over laughing. Tenzo. They yelled at him, the family had abided by his wishes to still be called Tenzo in public for the time being. Oh my god your faces, oh that was priceless. He said struggling to breathe. When he finally calmed down he smiled at their glares. Oh none of that, you two wouldn't hesitate to prank me if you got the chance. He told them to make the blush sheepishly. So what's up, come here for a bowl. Naruko asked, pulling him onto a seat. I was coming here to get you but, since we have a minute I guess one couldn't hurt. So, what's good, I've heard of Raymond before but never had any before. He said, grabbing a menu. The world suddenly went deathly quiet, the two girls on either side of the blonde went stark white with blank faces, then. You've never had Raymond before. They yelled to the point people and soon rubbed their ears, thinking they heard a faint echo. After his ears stopped ringing Naruto replied. No, mom and I were always traveling and she didn't feel like I should since it was so unhealthy. He said, another reason she never let him have it was fear of his Uzumaki addiction flaring up and her going broke on the stuff. But but, it's the food of the gods, the lifeblood of divine beings, even the great Kami herself bows before its greatness. 
Naruko cried dramatically, Nido though ever calm and compassed, was flipping out at their brother, never trying the noodle dish, and quickly ordered him a bowl. I don't get what the big deal is, it's just noodles, broth, meat, vegetables and fish cakes. He said accepting the bowl when it appeared and broke the chopsticks, the two girls leaned in close and watched as he took his first bite, expecting to declare it magnificent like they did the first time. Instead he calmly shrugged and continued to eat. It's pretty good, nothing to lose your mind over but still good. He said calmly, making the two girls face fault. S he takes more after dad, must balance him out or something. They thought. Anyway, as good as this is, we have to get going. Sensei and the Hokage called for you two for something regarding the fox, and they wanted me to bring you. He said quickly, finishing the bowl before dragging their protesting butts out of the stand, leaving behind a nice tip for the amount they ate. After 20 minutes they finally arrived, and the adults were treated to an entertaining show of Naruto, trying to drag them while they attempted to escape to return to their Raymond. It seems Naruto took more after Minato. They must have shown him Raymond or something. Mira said chuckling, remembering all the times she had to drag her friend away from the stands. Once they finally got the girls to focus on something else Naruto stepped out onto the field. Okay so mom knows what this is, and I think she came to the same idea I did, but, for everyone else I would be demonstrating with my partner. Naruto said biting his finger before flashing through the summoning, when the smoke cleared a medium wide and blue dragon, stood by pedal next to Naruto, this was Taka, Naruto's partner and the only dragon he could kill someone at will. What do you need, Naruto? The dragon asked, looking around to see where his partner summoned him. Demonstration, my sisters are having an issue with a certain fox, and I think I have a solution to their problem. Would Infernus get on my case if I showed them the fusion jutsu? He asked, Taka scratched his chin for a minute before shaking his head. Nah, it's not a secret of the clan so you should be fine. He said loosening up to get ready. Okay then, Nido, Naruka watched this carefully. He said before standing back to back with his partner. The two began to slowly go through a series of hand signs perfectly in sync, not even a single breath out of step with the other, finally as they neared the end they spoke. Fusion, ha. They yelled, a blinding bubble of light enclosed them causing everyone else to look away, when it died they looked back and felt their jaws drop. There stood a now fully grown Naruto with a fully matured and well-muscled body, his hair was back to blonde with some streaks of blue in it, on his back were a pair of blue and white wings, as well as a tail. This is the fusion jutsu, when two people do the hand signs in perfect sync with one another their bodies, minds, and more importantly chakra is fused together into a single entity for a time. My theory is if the girls can pull this off the chakra of the fox will be complete and the seal will be twice as strong to keep it contained. Naruto explained. Um, this plan does have the potential to work however, we need to be careful about how we do this. Incorrect fusions have a tendency to get. Weird. First time myself and Infernus tried we ended up acting like a super-powered drunk with a nasty temper and a hell of a punch. Mira warned everyone in the area to go potably, as they did not want to find out what the girls were like. After a few minutes Naruto and Taka unfused from each other, and the girls stepped up to give it a try, even though they were honestly scared out of their wits to even consider something like this, Naruto repeated the hand signs so they could copy them better before having them stand back to back and moving away. Okay, if everything goes like it should then they should be covered in a ball of light and fused together into one person successfully. Naruto said standing back as they started the sequence. And if something does go wrong and they can't do the fusion on their first time, what do we do then? Kakashi asked, looking up from his smut to watch what would happen. Then we hope they do not become too crazy powerful and try to stop them if they do. He said gulping a bit, maybe they should have practiced more with this. Too late as the girls finished and instead of a blinding dome of light they were enveloped in pink smoke, when it cleared they saw a larger looking Naruko with red streaks in her hair and a dull expression on her face. Fun time. She yelled and began running around in circles like a hyperactive child that just got their hands on some sugar, the problem was they were moving at very high speeds. Okay, we have to catch them. Naruto declared, this did not go as he planned it to, and considering he didn't think it through and figured they would be in sync as sisters, well it was more or less his fault all across the board. Hearing the declaration of catching, the Yuzumaki fusion stopped in her run around and faced them, then she gave them a hyperactive kid smile and turned, bolting from the field. You can't catch me, you can't catch me. She yelled as they ran after her. Okay I would just like to say I take full credit for this mess. Naruto said 30 minutes later as they completely lost sight of the hyperactive girl. Oh we know that already, in fact when we actually do catch her, we are going to be having a long talk about training someone more before handing them an unknown and telling them to simply do it right off that bat. Mira said heatedly at him, making him flinch. Hey come on, those two act so in sync with each other almost 95% of the time, I guess they would be able to do this with relative ease. He said. 
Never take a guess unless you know for a fact things will work out how you want them to. Minato commented as they peeked around a corner, they saw her at the end of the street drooling over a window of candy. So the screw-up basically made them a big child, funny considering all things. Mira commented, she had a theory that the fusion, if done incorrectly, basically brought out the opposite side of the normal people's personality and combined the two to make an odd mismatch of things. In this case, it brought out the hyperactive side of both Mido and Naruko. Okay, three, two, one. Now. He said as they rushed her, she turned just in time and laughed. You'll never catch me. She yelled running faster than they could keep up which was saying something seeing how they were using ninja speed. However, it didn't matter as they turned a corner and rammed headlong into Jiraiya who grabbed them before they could squirm away. Oi Tenzo, undo this right now. The Toad Sage ordered and Naruto complied, poking them sharply in the head, which caused another puff of smoke and the form to vanish, to reveal the girls back to normal with only headaches. Oh, I don't think we did that right. Nido commented, making the others sigh in relief. Well, as much as I hate to say it, even though it was an incomplete fusion the idea did indeed work as I felt the power of the fox level out inside them and seemed far less aggressive since we all know they accessed some of it during that chase. Mira said, getting nods out of the others. So the idea does indeed have merit, we just need to take the time to properly make sure the girls are in sync with one another before we try something like that again and the next we do it, we make sure we have a way to contain them in case something like this ever happens again. Naruto said relaxing a bit since the others didn't look like they were about ready to kill him once again. Thought so any chance we can go get more Raymond, that whole thing left us hungry. Naruko asked after a time causing the others to face fault at the sign of the girl wanting more to eat than normal. Seriously, is Raymond all you ever think about or something like that? Naruto honestly feared for the mental health and physical health of his sisters and his mother since he knew that was where they got the craving from judging by the way their mother looked at the mention of the dish. I honestly think sometimes it is, the entire family is crazy. He heard his father and Mira mumble and chuckled, this had been a weird day that was for sure but he just chalked it up to one of those days you never take seriously in your life. Chapter 14. The Chunin Exams Prelude. The day had finally arrived, the annual Chunin exams were set to kick off in Konoha in two days, and Naruto could not be more excited, after months of training with his families and team, he felt he was ready for anything the exams could throw at him, and then some. Three months since Naruko and Mido's first fusion attempt had given them quite a bit of time to get the hang of their new trick, resulting in them now able to do a perfect fusion whenever they pleased without even needing the use of hand signs. Their parents and godparents had trained them to the bone to prepare for what was to come with even the help of a few family friends like Hiruzen and Kakashi. Everything from Tajutsu revisions and improvement to helping with their sword skills, the adults of the Namikas and Kuratori family made sure that their children were ready for what lay ahead not just in the exams, but in the future, as well. Flashback, the Akatsuki. Minato asked, looking at Jiraiya who simply nodded in return. It had been two days since the disaster that had been the girls' first fusion, and right now things were a bit weird for the family, on the one hand they were glad the girls now had a way to control the Kyabi chakra safely, they had pretty much forbidden use of that until they had mastered it and didn't transform into a hyperactive teen child hyped on sugar. The girls were now getting a better feel for how the other thought and acted so they would be in better sync. That's right, a few of my contacts got word of them out of Iowa, apparently old Inoki has been in contact with them a few times despite the danger they pose, these guys have been doing mercenary work on near suicidal S rank missions, for the most part lately however, I have got an idea of what their true goals would be. Jiraiya told them, however someone else beat them to the punch. They have intentions of finding the Biju for some reason, don't they? Naruto set off to the side, he and his sisters had been led into the meeting regarding this, and now if this was true they knew why. He of course already knew of the Akatsuki thanks to his dragons, but it was good to hear so had Jiraiya and the others. From what I can tell, yes, however that spells a bad picture itself, a mercenary group wanting something to do with anything regarding the Biju just screams we need to watch our backs, especially Naruko and Mido. Jiraiya said, looking at the girls who gulped a bit nervously. Do we have any idea who exactly is in this group? Kishina asked, if they had that information then hopefully they could plan for what was to come and who they would have to face. No, unfortunately, I've only managed to gather rumors and they do not leave a pretty picture. One of them is mine and Sanadi's old teammate, and the other is Itachi Acha. Jiraiya said, his eyes drifted over to the girls when he said that and saw their faces grow dark. Before the massacre Naruko and Mido had looked up to Itachi, since their mothers were friends, it wasn't a surprise to see him around the household of the Namikas Uzumaki with Mikoto. After Naruto had disappeared he had been the one who managed to pull them out of the dark hole of grief they felt for driving their brother away and pushed them to get stronger to eventually find him. 
However, after the bloody night of the Achiha massacre, the girls had been destroyed to learn it was him who killed off his father and most of the clans, leaving only Makoto, Sasuke and three or so dozen members left. No one knew why they were spared, but most counted their lucky stars, and just like the rest of the village dismissed him as a traitor. To this day the girls were the only ones who still believed that was another reason for that night and intended to one day find the truth. So, if both Itachi and Orochimaru were a part of this group, then it is safe to say we are dealing with a band of criminals at the very least, s rank at the worst of it. Mira said, breaking the girls from their thoughts. Yeah and that just spells out a whole host of trouble not just for us, but Kanoha meaning it's time we up the girls training. Jiraiya said looking at the two then looking over at Naruto. Naruto, I'm gonna be honest here. I know from the toads that dragons can teach a summoner how to be a sage, as well as various arts that they can only perform using their fusion jutsus, we won't stop training you either since none of us plan to make the same mistake twice, but, I would advise trying to learn those arts. If you want to be able to protect your sisters, then you're going to have to be better than these guys. Jiraiya told him to leave him with a grim expression. Flashback over, Naruto had followed Jiraiya's advice and considered the requirements to become a dragon sage, unfortunately his main roadblock had been his age, since his body had not stabled out and stopped growing making it, so he would have to constantly restrain himself using the art and increase the risk of getting killed by turning to stone. So, for the moment he practiced his fusion and techniques to help prepare them for the coming conflict. Right now he and his sisters once again sat on the bar stools at Ichiraku's to get some lunch after a hard training session earlier that day, Kishina would have joined them however she was called in by Minato for what she assumed was the Chunin nominations. She had made it very clear she was entering them and was expecting them to win. So, what do you think they will be doing for the exams this year? Naruko asked as she slurped up the noodles from her bowl, she and Mito weren't eating their usual amount, seeing how they were a bit anxious for the days to come, so they decided to take it easy. Well that and their parents had threatened to ban them from the holy place altogether if they continued to burn through money on the amount of food they ate there. And could be anything really, I know Anko will be probably hosting the second exam, seeing how happy she has been around the house, but what she plans to do is beyond me. He admitted. Recently he had noticed her shift in attitude around the house and had managed to pry that out of her only just a few days ago. Thinking of her made him feel a bit sad as well, ever since they had returned from the mission to Wei Banco had been trying to spend time with him outside of just seeing him around the house, but, her position at the T&I division cut into her schedule a lot, and his training with his family didn't help the matter, he had just resigned himself to seeing her at home most days now. Well maybe you could try and get something else out of her, say by taking her out on a date. Naruko said with a smirk, making him nearly choke on his noodles. Wouldn't that be nice, it would be about time as well. Mito said calmly, seriously the relationship between those two was so awkward, it was clear to everyone they liked each other so much that even the eternally dense Naruko had noticed and poked fun at the fact that he had yet to ask her out. I don't know what the two of you are talking about, why would I ask out Anko on a date? She's like my sister for Kami's sake, that would just be weird. Naruto blurted out as he hit a blush. He is about as dense as Naruko when it comes to that purple-haired girl. Mito thought but chose to stop embarrassing her brother and change to the subject. Well in any case, try and find out more if you can. For now, I believe our little trio of mice is back. Mito said calmly, off to the side a large and oddly square-shaped rock began to fidget. Oh you don't say, didn't we give those three a warning the last time they decided to follow us around poorly? Naruko said smirking seeing what her sister was up to, the fidgeting of the rock got worse as it began to shake. I believe we did something along the lines of being chased by sharp pointy objects and dragons with sharp teeth if we caught them again. Naruto said smirking as he played along himself, by now the rock was vibrating in fear in place. Indeed it was, shall we get started? She said drawing a kunai, the two other siblings nodded and drew their swords audibly, which was enough to set the fake rock over the edge, a trio of children suddenly burst out of the box and bowed on their hands and knees in fright. We're sorry, don't kill you us please. They yelled hoping to appease the larger teens. The trio burst out laughing at the reaction they got and put their weapons away, returning to their meals. I stand up, it's embarrassing to see you three kneel like that. Naruko said chuckling more, the three children in front were known as Konohamaru, Mogi, and Yudin, or as most called them the Konohamaru Corps, they were the grandchildren of the village elders, including Hiruzen and good friends with Team Eleven. Did you guys have to scare the pee out of us? Konohamaru asked with a sigh, knowing they did wrong by the box disguise. Yes we did, we figured you would have learned to not use the square box trick after the last time you tried it on us and watched it backfire. Mido commented, the first time it had happened the Namika's kids had pranked the kids hard, using various paint bombs, glue, feathers and wigs, since then they had decided to teach the kids how to properly be stealthy by pranking them whenever they got caught. The younger trio had yet to go unseen by them. 
Well what are you going to do to us now that you caught us? Mogi asked, knowing even if they didn't intend to attack and kill them with sharp and pointy weapons, there would still be some form of retribution for being caught in their future. Well that depends. Naruto said looking at them and making them shiver, that was a look that promised trouble. On what? Kanohimaru asked, looking at them, for a second he saw their eyes gleam as they looked at each other before they looked at them together. On if you can escape or not. They said together and once again drew their weapons, the trio grabbed each other and was nothing more than a dust trail in a matter of seconds. So you want to chase them for interrupting our lunch? Naruto asked looking back at the girls, they smirked and quickly finished, and then just like that they were off with only the sound of Ryo hitting the counter, telling anyone they had eaten there. Then minutes later the trio of teens slowed down and looked around to see if they could spot their prey. It seemed that the younger kids had improved their escape skills at the very least, as they saw neither hide nor hair of them in the crowd. Now, if we were the Konohimaru Corps, where exactly would we go to avoid us? Nito asked, looking around. Um, best guess would be your dad's officer the Saratobi Manor, since we said if they could make it there, then they were home free, of course we never did think they would actually be able to get there, so it would be kind of a surprise if they did. Naruto said. True, I think we should fan out and look for them, stay on the rooftops and keep an eye out for any kind of suspicious behavior, in case they decide to try a transformation or another disguise. Nito said. Hey, let me go you jerk. Came a shout from close by, one that sounded like Kanohimaru. Ought we just follow the sound of Kanohimaru's voice? Naruko said, making the other two sweat drop, and they had such high hopes for the kids. Hopping back onto the rooftops they came across a very interesting and complicated situation. Currently Kanohimaru was being held at first point by what they decided to call a bipedal black cat wearing makeup with a giant wrapping of bandages on its back, next to the cat was a blonde girl wearing a black kimono with a black sash around her waist, her hair was a dark sandy blonde that was tied up in four ponytails. The third outlooker watched the whole thing from his perch in a tree, he had light red hair and a blank expression on his face with the kanji for love tattooed above his left eye, his clothes were forgetful with it just being a brown shirt and pants with black shinobi sandals on, on his back was a large gourd made of and carrying sand. What stood out most on all three was the Suna headband on each other. Well looks like we get to prevent an international incident now don't we, so who wants who? Naruko asked with her eyes on the busty blonde, for some reason the girl pissed her off and she couldn't explain it. Well since I kind of like the kid, I'll deal with the catboy. Naruto said smirking as he reached to his back for his sealed sword, the trio only needed to nod once, and then they were gone in a shunshun. Benkuro smirked a bit as he cocked back his fist to punch the kid who had run into him hard, that had hurt, and now he wanted payback. Ignoring his sister's paranoia about someone catching him he pushed forward to throw the punch when he felt it stop and be held in a vice-like grip. You know, I'm not the type of guy who plays hero all the time, only done it on a few occasions for the people I like. One of those people happens to be the kid you are currently trying to hit, so I'll ask this nicely only once. Naruto said with a calm lazy voice as he held back the fist, that voice changed a moment later. Drop the kid or I'll break your ass. He warned making Kankuro shiver. Damari, surprised when she saw the blonde just appear out of nowhere and stop Kankuro from punching the kid, shifted a bit to grab her fan when she felt the tip of a blade resting lightly under her chin. Glancing down she saw a long white katana being held by a girl with bright blonde hair and a cheeky smile. No, 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 can't have you helping your buddy out and doing something to cause an international incident. After all, he is the third Hokage's grandson. Naruko told her to make Tamari go wide-eyed. Drops the kid. She warned Kankuro who heard the same thing quickly complied and moved away from the men over to Nito, who stood away watching them and keeping an eye on the redhead to see if he decided to try something. Now then, since we know you three are here for the Chunin exams, we are going to give you a bit of a reprieve and not go and tell this to anyone, however if it happens again, you can be assured you and your buddy up in the tree over there will be out of this village faster than you can say shit. Naruto said letting go of the puppet master's fist and walked away from him, Naruko copying him a minute later, both still watching the redhead. Damari followed their gaze and went wide-eyed in horror when Gara appeared in front of them and watched a trio of older teens. Gara, wh what are you doing? Kankuro panicked when he saw the redhead. Shut up, or I will kill you. Gara said in a voice that sent shivers up everyone's back, his attention never left the group, particularly the male of them. Do us a favor and keep your teammates out of trouble, you seem to be someone who they listen to. Naruto told him keeping a blank face to match the kids, on the inside, he was a bit surprised at the killer intent the kid was literally spewing at him. Who are you, the one with the amber eye? Gara asked, inside his head his mother roared for that one to be slaughtered, for his blood to coat her sand, and Gara would comply soon enough. Enzo Kuratori. Naruto told him, the others watched the exchange with either horror or passive amusement. Knowing this, I intend to kill you in the exams. 
Gara declared as if it was the most normal thing in the world, with that said he turned and left with his two horrified teammates, who were looking at the blonde and black-haired kid with pity. What do you suppose that was all about? Naruko asked while watching them leave, the guy set her on edge, and he just threatened to kill her brother, she was not taking that shit lying down. No idea, but I have a feeling I need to watch my back during these exams. Naruto said as the three turned to leave and returned to what they were doing, which prompted another Konohamaru core chase. Two days later Team 11 stood outside the school building where the exams would be set to begin, having spent the two days resting and getting ready, they finally felt optimistic about their chances of winning this thing. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Naruko said, smirking as she cracked her knuckles, her katana hanging loosely at her side. We have to remember to take this seriously though, this is our chance to get promoted, but if we want to then we have to stick together and keep each other safe. Mito said, getting nods from the others. Alright, let's get this show on the road. Naruto said as they walked into the building, it didn't take them long to reach the second floor, where they saw the crowd of genin falling for the fake trap, choosing to ignore it and keeping to themselves, they soon reached the true third floor and walked down the hallway to see the door, standing next to it though was their sensei. Mom, what are you doing here? Naruko asked glad to see her, she smiled and walked over giving them all a hug. I just wanted to come and tell you all how proud I am of you for doing this, I know this is a big step forward, and what you will be facing in there will not be easy, but, you are my students, and I have trained you well, so I don't see any reason for you to not win this thing. She told them, smiling. We'll do our best to do that mom, we swear. Naruto said smiling and giving her another hug, something she very much appreciated. Now, I have held you three up long enough, go in there and remember whatever you do stick together. She told them with a wink before vanishing in a puff of smoke, showing she was nothing but a shadow clone, the trio filed away her last bit of advice for later since they thought it might be handy before walking to the door and pushing it open. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.